day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment. They came from every corner of the country. That's not a good sign. Tanya, get your phone ready. Get out my day timer. It's behind you. Summer is fast approaching, and so are sports camps at Bethel College. If your child or family member is looking to bring their game to a whole new level, then Bethel Sports Camps are the perfect choice. Camps are for boys and girls ages 5 to 18 and include girls basketball, boys basketball, father-son overnight basketball, cheerleading, girls softball, boys baseball, track and field, and several different soccer camps for boys and girls. There will also be tennis for both boys and girls, girls volleyball, various overnight camps, and so much more. Our camp instructors are some of the most recognized coaches here at Bethel and bring many years of wisdom and expertise from their respective sports. Your child will be taught both the basics and advanced skills of their chosen activity in a fun, relaxed atmosphere. For registration and more information such as dates, times, and pricing on all of Bethel sports camps, visit us online at BethelCollegePilots.com forward slash camps. Spirited competition, life-changing connections. Bethel College Athletics, we are the ground for spirited connections. Teachers Credit Union introduces the new IU Athletics checking account and the exclusive IU Athletics Platinum Debit MasterCard. Show your spirit and open an account today. With this exclusive and free IU Athletics Debit MasterCard that earns a rebate with no fees. For more information on TCU's products and services, visit TCUNet.com or stop by your nearest TCU service center. Teachers Credit Union deposits are federally insured by the NCUA and were equal housing lender. Accounts subject to eligibility, terms and conditions. See TCU Debit MasterCard terms and conditions for complete details. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Regional Radio Sports Network. We are broadcasting live and in living color from the YCAM Athletic Center on the campus of Bethel College in Mishawaka, Indiana, the Gates Gymnasium, home of the Bethel College Pilots. The 21-9 Bethel College Pilots taking on the University of St. Francis Cougars. Pilots at 21-9, the Cougars at 18-12. We can throw out all the records and all the superlatives, all the numbers, because somebody's going home tonight in regards to postseason play, potentially. The 13th-ranked Pilots hoping to, that they can break the string of uh, what they've had to deal with here in the last couple weeks where they have really, really struggled down the stretch. A heroic effort by the basketball team a week ago against Marion where they are able to score eight points in the last 40 seconds or so. And also got a healthy juice of luck on their side with uh, Marion missing three first halves of one in bonuses. That's the reason they come in with uh, 21 wins instead of 10 losses, Matt Copsey, as you take a look at what's going on. We can throw out all the records. Crossroads League play. We've got a number three seed. 
We have a number six seed here today. Both teams won on each respective each other's home floor. So I don't know what to think about this. Bottom line is that the Pilots shoot well, which has been their MO all season long. If they shoot well, they got a great chance. However, I think they're going to be dealt a very, very bad hand because they're taking on one of the best players in all of the Crossroads League. And he would get my vote for the player of the year, and that's Scott Cohn, the former Bishop Dwanger standout, averaging 19 points, 10 rebounds, 2 blocks, 1 and a half assists. He can do it all. He is a load inside, and nobody on the Bethel basketball team can match up against him. Well, we had a chance last week, Paul, to see Grace with uh, Greg Miller, and he kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Greg Miller in the way that he comes about and uh, takes no prisoners on the inside. So if Bethel has to come tonight, they have to come ready to play physical, especially on the inside. They've got to be aggressive. They've got to hit the boards, and they've got to make sure that they can hit their shots early on, and they've got to avoid the turnovers. They've got to come out strong and just play aggressive on both ends of the court. The 79th meeting all time between the Cougars and the Pilots getting their way here. Chad LaCrosse has got a great job in his short tenure. He's 5-1 against Mike Light, but there's not a lot of coaches that can say that they got that type of winning percentage. Bethel, however, leads the all-time series 43-35. to USF has won five of the last six in the series. Both teams, however, do come on a positive note because they both won their last regular season game. College basketball today here on Regional Radio Sports is being presented in part by the Gates Automotive Group. Serving Michiana for over eight years, Gates Downtown Pre-Owned, Gates Chevy World, and Gates Toyota. We also want to thank our friends at Teachers Credit Unit, a proud corporate partner of the Regional Radio Sports Network. TCU has the tools to prepare you for financial success. Prepare for the future by visiting them online at www.tcunet.com. Applebee's, you can go to the neighborhood. Once again, home of the coaches box, that's Applebee's. I also want to thank our friends at Cardinal Bus, the official travel partner of the Bethel College Pilots for all your travel needs. 800-348-7487. Hacienda Mexican Restaurants, one of our fine season sponsors. Chips, salsa, salsa, chips. Which came first to your table tonight? There is always something special going on at Hacienda Mexican Restaurant. And anchoring our coverage all season long, every high school, every college, every professional sporting event, you hear on regional radio sports and all of our affiliates anchored by our friends at the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines, if you think you have what it takes, call them at 1-800-MARINES or lock on to the World Wide Web and visit them at www.marines.com. The first round of the Crossroads League 2013 tournament gets underway when we come back after the timeout. We'll set the stage. Coming up on the pregame show, we'll also have conversations with the head coaches. Chad LaCrosse, who's done a spectacular job in the early stages of his young varsity career. And, of course, Mike Leifert, the Hall of Famer. We'll hear from both of those fine gentlemen. And we'll do that right after this brief timeout on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing great or poor, large or petty, never give in. Winston Churchill's immortal words stirred an entire country in the face of certain defeat. Today, these words give each of us the courage to reach for our own victories. Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never. Commitment. Pass it on. The foundation for a better life begins to come. Here at Applebee's, they have all new entrees that are unbelievably great tasting and under 550 calories each. I believe it when I taste it. Uh oh, got a skeptical diner on our hands. Yeah, take a bite of the new zesty Roma chicken and shrimp. Mmm, zesty, mouth-watering flavor. I believe it. See, I told you, it's delicious and under 550 I calories. I believe it too. Oh, and the lady at the bar tried the roasted dog so long. Hey, I'm convinced. Me too. Hey, I get it. Great taste under 550 calories is super impressive. But just saying, I was right with surprise. You were right. You were right. Right. Anyway, come try Applebee's roasted dog salon and new zesty roll of chicken shrimp. Starting at just $9.99. Big portions, big flavors, and under 550 calories each. Taste and belief. See you tomorrow. The best part of Applebee's price and participation can vary. Back live to the Gage Gymnasium. I'm Paul Condry along with Matt Cossey. The 2012-2013 Crossroads League Tournament gets underway this evening at venues around the the Midwest. Home teams tonight, Bethel Grace, Spring Arbor, and Indiana Wesleyan. Oh, certainly you would think theoretically would have the advantage. But this is Crossroads League basketball. 
you never know what's going to happen. And of course, you got guys in black and white over there who have a tendency to call things a little different than we would like, regardless on who, which game we're broadcasting. Matt Cops, you set the stage on what's happening tonight. Well, in addition to Bethel and St. Francis, you have Grace uh, taking on Marion. Taylor is at Spring Arbor, and Huntington is, is at Indiana Wesleyan. And over in the women's tournament, uh, this coming Friday, you'll have uh, Indiana Wesleyan will be taking on Huntington, and Bethel will be on the road taking on St. Francis this coming Friday night. And the two winners will return to playing at the higher-seeded team on Monday night for the Crossroads League Tournament Championship. In the Chicago and Collegiate Athletic Conference tonight, Trinity Christian is at number one, Cardinal Stritch. Olivet Nazarene is at number four, St. Francis Holy Cross. That game is on Regional Radio Sports on another one of our affiliates. Bob Shimmerhorn's club is on the road at number two, St. X. Purdue Kayamet is at number three, IU South Bend. In women's action in the Chicago and Collegiate Athletic Conference, Kayamet St. Joseph is at number one, Roosevelt. Number five, Olivet Nazarene is at number four, Purdue Cal. Number seven, Indiana South Bend is at number two, St. X. And number six, St. Francis is at number three, Cardinal Stritch. A slew of great college basketball here in the Midwest going on at the NAI Division II level. And as always, it's uh, part of the pregame show. We go one-on-one -on -one with the coaches of uh, these two respective clubs. I had a chance just moments ago to go one-on-one -on -one with the coaches and spent some time with them and got their feedback on tonight's matchup. And one-on-one -on -one with Chad Lacoste is now right here on Regional Radio Sports. College basketball here on Regional Radio Sports from the White Camp Athletic Center at the Gates Gymnasium on Paul Country. We're visiting with Chad Lacrosse here, here on the pregame show. Chad, first of all, that's a number three versus number six. I know at this stage, but the bottom line, I think, in this one, there's young men on the St. Francis roster who have wear red banners in the gym back at the Hutzel Athletic Center. That automatically scares the dickens out of everybody in the Crossroads League field right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it, you know our seniors have won a lot of games and been pretty successful, and they understand the you know we haven't really talked about this being an elimination game for us, but uh, you know they're they're no dummies. They understand what this game means to us, and we need to make sure we're focused and and uh, you know getting a great start from the tip. You know, realistically, both team won on each other's floor. Well, that's ironic and unique in this league because you know you steal a win on, on the league in this league, and, and those are at a premium. So. Throwing all the records out, throwing all the past performances out, we're all starting over. So let's talk about preparation and starting over. When you still, you want to think about some things that you did well and some things that you didn't do well. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, we, you know, we take this this week as tournament week and as far as just kind of getting back to what we're good at. And we feel like, uh, you know, being aggressive offensively, you know, setting good solid screens, doing the little things, blocking out, you know, rebounding and, and, and defending. we got to do a great job in transition, uh, defending their transition, and uh, you know, just getting back on defense and not giving easy buckets up. So we need to make sure that, that everybody's on the same page. And, and uh, you know, there's Bethel has a roster full of guys that can go off on any given night. So we need to be sure we're sharp defensively. All right, Scott Gondis just had a, a really, really special year. Uh, I would, I would give, make the argument with anybody about him being the player of the year in this league. Uh, an athletic kid who can do it inside, outside, he can rebound. He can shoot, he can score. He is one of the toughest matchups. Let's talk about how you get him in space where he can do special things. Well, I think we need to give him, put him in situations to be successful. We understand that, you know, the past two games, Bethel's really doubled him hard, and, and uh, we feel like, you know, maybe early in the game, he's, it's going to be an opportunity for him to give the ball, put his teammates in, in successful uh, uh, situations. So, you know, we, we got to make sure he's getting on the block. We, you know, when Scott's really good, he's taking everything everything to the basket and being really aggressive, not fading away. So uh, I think he understands that and he knows that we need him to be aggressive on both ends of the floor. You know, he has to defend, he has to block shots, rebound for us, and get out and run the floor. So he's, I mean, he can get up and down like no other big guy in our league, I believe. And when he's 
he's doing that, we're really good. Okay, let's break it down. On the offensive side, Chad, and on the defensive side, what do the Cougars have to do to be successful and advance to round two? Offensively, we have to get good movement. You know, uh, at times when we struggle, it's, we, we have a lot of uh, stagnant off, uh, you know, on offense and just kind of staying around. So we have to have good movement, good screens. Again, being aggressive, taking things to the basket, uh, you know, and attacking the basket. Uh, you know, Scott's going to have to do a great job of passing out of the double team tonight and finding open guys and, and uh, defensively, we need to make sure that we're getting back and, and stopping their transition, not giving them easy buckets, because when they get easy buckets, they're really good. Their confidence uh, you know, gets high, and, and they can get high. So we need to make sure we're back in transition and rebound the basketball, not give them second efforts. Okay, there you have the words of wisdom. He's been there, done that, and he's got it the rings and the T-shirts to prove it. We'll be back with more. This three versus six matchup, first round of the Crossroads League tournament, continues right here on Regional Radio Sports. The Gates Automotive Group, home of the 995 oil change at all locations. No gimmicks, no tricks, just honest service. The oil change includes a filter and lubrication with the total service you expect from Gates. No appointment needed. Gates Chevy Road across from the Bethel Campus in Mishawaka and Gates Toyota on Ireland Road in South Bend. Crossroads League College Basketball here today on Regional Radio Sports, the Buffalo College Pilots uh, with a home game here to entertain the University of St. Francis, the 79th meeting between these two clubs getting together here in the first round matchup, always very, very entertaining with a number three, number six matchup. We we're starting things off here with uh, Mike Lightfoot, the head basketball coach of the Buffalo College Pilots and coach. First of all, kind of take me back uh, to the uh, the game against Marion. What an incredible uh, win for this uh, young basketball team to be able to rally back from what certainly a it looked like it was doomed by eight or nine points in the final minute. It really was, you know, it was one of those things that as I watched my tape, I was getting nervous again because I didn't know if we were, we were going to win, you know, just that way. I couldn't think, how in the world are we going to get this done? How are we going to pull it off? But it was a, definitely a great win and uh, one that was much needed in, in all respects. As you reflect back on the, the film, uh, obviously there's a lot of heroes for your basketball team to rise to the forefront. Uh, who are the guys who stepped to the forefront to down the stretch? Well, you know, Matt had a great uh, you know minute there. Where he did a lot of good things. Uh, I think that some other parts of his game he struggled with, but he sure had a good good minute. And he had a great minute. But you know, I thought that. Uh, People that set up those shots or did the little things in order to get that. I thought Michael Milson came in and got us a couple keyboards during that during that spell there that we had to have, and you know Zach hit a couple threes during that time span too to kind of get us back in the game. So it, you know it always takes uh, some special things that happen, and you know we, we took advantage of it. People said, well, yeah, they missed free throws. I said, yeah, but we had to hit shots, and so we did, and so uh, it definitely was a great win for our guys, a much needed win. Okay, so we can put the regular season to bed. Not a solid, not a solid effort, though. If you ask me, 21 wins and nine losses, especially when you consider that uh, this team was predicted seventh. I think they they fared very, very well. And they have a lot to be proud of. Now, let's turn our attention to St. Francis. Brand new season. Everybody zero and zero. Everybody's shooting for that that big prize out there at the Keter Gymnasium at the College of the Ozarks. That's what everybody's mindset is right now, and that's what every coach in the city is telling you. Hey, anything can happen. All right, not league, absolutely. I know that uh, St. Francis, those guys have all been there. They've cut down the nets. They know exactly what they're talking about. So, uh, you know, every one of their guys in the, pl in the program have been there. But we've got one. And so I think that, that you know, they, they, they know exactly what it takes to, to get there. And I'm sure they've reminded themselves over and over this week what, what that really means. Both teams won on each other's respective home floors, which is kind of an oddity because uh, home wins are, uh, I shouldn't say they're commonplace, but road wins are, road wins are a premium in this league. Yeah, yeah, and I think that uh, if you look uh, with a veteran team that St. Francis had, they, they've played on the national scene and they've won on the national scene, so winning on the road is nothing new to them. When I look back on these uh, these game cards of mine, and I, I look at the, the, the there were moments in each one of these games where both teams could have ran away and hid from the other, and likewise on the other side of things. But it came down to one or two plays, a free throw here, a three-point basket here, uh, a, a key rebound here or there. So let's talk about making those key plays and the most opportune times in this one. Yeah, it's got to be a game of making plays. They've got you know outstanding players to do that, you know, and that's exactly what they did last time. They, 
they uh, they made some key plays down the stretch in the last uh, two or three minutes there that just uh, you know found a way to get it done. So uh, this game's going to go down to making plays and who does it the best and who can defend the best is going to win the game. We talked about matchups. Scott Cohn is, uh, is one of the best big guys in this league, if not in the in the country. He's he's a guy that's it's very very difficult because he's an athletic kind of guy, very similar to Patrick Hopkins in the, in the fact that he's averaging a double double. So very 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 uh, good in that regard. But he also has some help from some guys on the perimeter. If those guys from the perimeter shoot the ball well, it makes him even that much more deadly. And that's what they did last time that they didn't do at home. They they really shot the ball well here. Hogan shot the ball extremely well. We know Bloom can shoot the ball well. You know, those guys are, are nails. And, and, you know, they know that we have to double him. So uh, their spacing and their floor spacing and all those things, I'm sure they worked on. So it's going to be who can execute, who can scramble. And then the bottom line is, Paul, who's got his shots? Uh, we got his shots or we got his shots? Okay, it's the seniors' last go around. Last time potentially playing on this floor. I would think that there's got to be a strong motivating factor that they want to get off to a good start. Any special thoughts that you have for the senior group as you say goodbye to them playing here in this gymnasium potentially for the last time? Well, they are a special group because they've got us back to where we wanted to be. You know, I think that uh, they started at the top. They started at being competitive in our league, and, you know, uh, they wanted to turn around in that way. So that's a major accomplishment, like you alluded to earlier. I think that people don't realize how tough it is to win in our league and to be picked seventh and to be able to come out of this on third. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a major accomplishment, a lot of hard work and great leadership by our upperclassmen. Okay, Crossroads League basketball uh, postseason tournament. Both teams have had success. I don't know if last year means anything to this year. Comes down as the shot, keys to the victory. What do the Bethel Pilots have to do to win? Well, I think one thing we've got to be uh, really good with the basketball. We turned the ball over too much in uh, our last few games, and that's really hurt us. And the other thing is we've got to have an inside presence. And, and Cohen hurts us in that area because he's a great shot blocker and he's very good around the basket. But we've got to have some type of inside presence tonight in order to win. I think when it comes time to play tournament games, you got to have, yeah, you got to shoot the ball, but everybody can guard people shooting. you got to have an inside presence. Mike, best of luck tonight. Thank you very much, Paul. Once again, Buffalo Pilots taking on the St. Francis Cougars coming your way next. We'll be right back after this on Regional Radio Sports. Glad that you can join us here from the Y Camp Athletic Center here at Bethel College inside the Gates Gymnasium. Crossroads League basketball getting underway here on Regional Radio Sports. I'm Paul Condry along with Matt Copsey courtside here. Both teams have headed to the locker rooms to get some final instruction and, and some emotional support from the guys wearing the suits tonight as we'll get underway here. We'll break this one down when we come back after the timeout. Once again, the Crossroads League men's basketball quarterfinals. The number three seeded Pilots, the number six seeded St. Francis Cougars. We'll be back with more right after this on Regional Radio Sports. Summer is fast approaching, and so are sports camps at Bethel College. If your child or family member is looking to bring their game to a whole new level, then Bethel Sports Camps are the perfect choice. Camps are for boys and girls ages 5 to 18 and include girls basketball, boys basketball, father-son overnight basketball, cheerleading, girls softball, boys baseball, track and field, and several different soccer camps for boys and girls. There will also be tennis for both boys and girls, girls volleyball, various overnight camps, and so much more. Our Camp instructors are some of the most recognized coaches here at Bethel and bring many years of wisdom and expertise from their respective sports. Your child will be taught both the basics and advanced skills of their chosen activity in a fun, relaxed atmosphere. For registration and more information such as dates, times, and pricing on all of Bethel sports camps, visit us online at BethelCollegePilots.com forward slash camps. Spirited competition, life-changing connections. Bethel College Athletics, we are the ground for spirited connections. Back here to the uh, Gates Gymnasium, Paul Condry along with Matt Copsey, taking a look at uh, some of the dynamics as we set the stage. We'll call it the sidebar, as Matt Copsey has written many, many times in his Hall of Fame to be career. St. Francis, 31 and 24 in postseason play. Under young head coach Chad Lacrosse, they are 11 and 3. St. Francis is 5 and 1 in conference postseason play under Chad Lacrosse. St. Francis, in their run to the NAI National Tournament Series in 2010, 
St. Francis is an eye-popping 18 and 4 in postseason play. USF has won 14 games in its last 22 postseason games by five points or fewer. And the pilots, when you talk about those same type of numbers, six of the pilots' nine losses this season have been by four points or less, and six have been by teams currently ranked or receiving votes. And for the pilots and the Cougars, they have played each other four times in postseason play. Bethel has the upper hand with three wins and one loss. So those are just some of the undercard, if you will, as we look at today's matchup. The pilots' all-time record against ranked teams is and now 404 and 82 the program scored a victory as a member of the top 25 came earlier in the season against Huntington and on January 15th the win also marked the pilots 250 all-time win in Crossroads League history. Those are just some of the numbers. It's going to come down to who makes shots and who doesn't. Matt Copsey's going to break it down for you. He's got our game day feature doing that next right here on Regional Radio Sports. Every day men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, wherever the mission takes us, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Back live to the Gates Gymnasium, Paul Conry along with Matt Coxie. Great that you can join us here tonight here for this Crossroads League opener between the Bethel Pilots and the St. Francis Cougars. Matt, give us a sneak preview of some of the things that you had a chance to well over, if you will, when it comes to the numbers. Well, the Pilots rank number one in the nation in three-point field goal percentage at 42%. They're number five in rebounding at 42.2 per game. Number six in field goal percentage defense at 39.5%. Number eight in field goal percentage at 48.9%. Number 10 in rebounding margin, 7.8%. Number 11 in scoring margin, 12.6 point, 12.6 points per game. Number 13 in scoring, 82.3 points per game. Number 19 in assist, 15.8. Number 24 in three-point field goal percentage defense, 31%. Number 39 in assist to turnover ratio, 1.042. And number 40 in rebounds allowed, 34.4. Sophomore Zach Miller ranks number seven in the nation in three pointers made, 3.2, and number seven in three point field goal percentage, 36.2%. Uh, Junior Ryan Benner ranks number 13th in three point field goal percentage at 44.6%. Sophomore Matt Schaus is number 21 in assists, 4.6 per game, and senior Jordan Bauman ranks number 22 in field goal percentage at 56.4%. St. Francis ranks number 17 in the nation in rebounding margin, 4.9 per game, number 23 in blocks, 3.5, number 26 in scoring allowed, 66.6 points per game, and rebounds allowed, 32.7, number 44 in assist to turnover ratio, 1.019, number 47 in assist, 13.1, and number 50 in rebounds, 37.6 per game. Glad that you can join us here for the 79th meeting all time. A number three versus number six matchup. Round one of the 2012-2013 Crossroads League Tournament. The team split the season series with wins on the other's home court. Chad Cross has done a great job against head-to-head -head matchups against the Hall of Famer Mike Light, but he's five and one. Bethel, however, as a team, leads the all-time series 43 to 35. Both teams won their regular season finale, which gives them a little bit of a momentum. Bethel, of course, uh, uh, in their ball game, a 69-68 thriller down at uh, John Grimes Court. And for St. Francis, they were able to record a home win against Mount Vernon and Nazarene, 77 to 67. Moments from now, we're going to go on down to the the scorers table, and we're going to go one on one with Brian Miller. 
course, the voice of the Bethel Pilots here at our broadcast location. Our coverage of college basketball today presented in part by the Gates Automotive Group, Teachers Credit Union, Applebee's, Cardinal Boss, Hacienda Mexican Restaurants, and the United States Marine Corps, all anchoring our coverage of college basketball this evening from the Gates Automotive from the Gates Gym and just right across the way <laughs> we want to thank our friends at the Gates Automotive Group Matt. Yes, Gates is expanding to better serve the Michigan area. Coming in April, the new Gates of Granger, total service and body shop for brands, plus top 10 models of pre owned certified cars, pickups, SUVs, and brands. The Gates Automotive Group doing whatever it takes for 83 years. Once again, the Pilots 21-9, and 12-6 and six in the crossroads this season. Mike Lightfoot, the head coach of the Pilots, 680 wins, only 253 losses. And the Pilots in search of their 1,122nd win here tonight. It's going down to Brian Miller. Officials and spectators in tonight's contest. As a member of the NAI and the Crossroads League, we are committed to the true spirit of competition as champions of character, embracing five core values, which are respect, integrity, responsibility, servant leadership, and sportsmanship. Fans, we ask each of you as a participant, as an official, or as a spectator, to abide by these values by creating a positive environment in which our athletes may participate, our officials may work, and you, the spectator, may enjoy. Fans, please enjoy tonight's contest. Fans, this reminder, Cypress Risk Management is the official insurance agency of the Crossroads League. Cypress Risk Management provides innovative insurance solutions for all your student athlete and athletic insurance needs. See them online at cypressriskmanagement.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this time we ask you to please rise and kindly remove your caps as Bethel Senior and Basketball Manager Ryan Binkley leads us in tonight's opening prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for the ability to come and uh, to enjoy such a good sport. Uh, we pray that you would help us, uh, keep us safe as we go, go home, go our separate ways. Help us to ultimately glorify you in this game as the players play, the, the fans watch, and the, and the refs ref, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Fans, please remain standing as we honor America and those who serve and protect it with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Tonight's national anthem will be performed by Bethel freshman Kelly Burgesson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets the bombs bursting. efforts. Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Gates Gymnasium here on the campus of Buffalo College. This is the Y Camp Center. Thank you for attending tonight's men's basketball opening round matchup of the Crossroads League Conference Tournament. Tonight's matchup features the sixth seed, the Cougars of the University of St. Francis, and the third seed, your Buffalo College Pilots. Let's meet the starting lineups brought to you by Martin Supermarkets. Kevin Martins for service and savings. First for the visitors from the USF. Starting at one guard, a 63 senior from Golden, Indiana, number four, Ethan Hussey. Adam Bowen, a 6'7 junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 21, Scott Cohn. 
And the guard for the Cougars, six lead senior from Wolfwoodville, Indiana, number 30, Kevin Bloom. Also at guard is six foot three sophomore from Maryville, Indiana, number 32, Josh Hogan. And at forward for the Cougars is six six senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 44, Brad Sneary. Head coach of the Cougars is Chad Lacrosse. Let's take a look at our numbers as they go to the video here at the Lycam Athletic Center. St. Francis comes in averaging 69 points a game, giving up 66 and a half. They're out rebounding their opponents, 37 and a half to 32 and a half. They're turning the ball over at 14 turnovers for a ball game, 66% from the line, 44% from the field, 30% from beyond the arc, 14 to 6, 6 steals, and three and a half block shots for a ball game. Buffalo College, conversely. 82%, or check that, 82 points for a ball game, giving up 69 and a half. They're out rebounding their opponents, 42 to 34. 15 turnovers, eight steals for a ball game, 16 assists, 48.9% from the field, 66%, and number one in America from beyond the arc at 42%. Those are the numbers for tonight's number three, number six matchup. Now it's time to the Boys and girls, BG fans of all ages, black and black let me hear you. It's time to relate together with the starting lineup for your Bethel College Pilots. At one guard, a six foot four sophomore from Greensburg, Indiana, number 20, Matt Schultz. And another guard for your Pilots, a six foot sophomore from Connorsville, Indiana, number double two, Zach Miller. And forward from BC, a 6'7 senior from Neal, Indiana, number 30, Jordan Bowman. And going for your opponents, a 6'4 junior from Mishawaki, Indiana, number 34, Ryan Benner. And in forward, he's 6'6, a junior from Portland, Indiana, number 41, Patrick Eddy. Double coach and attorney to tally. Ryan Lightfoot, head coach of the Pilots in the 26th season. 1978 double graduate is Mike Lightfoot. There you have the numbers. Cougars decked out black shorts with the blue trim. The numbers are blue, trimmed in white with Cougars on the front of the black jersey. Buffalo College, all white jerseys, white shorts. The blue numbers trimmed in gray, Buffalo written in blue. On the front of the white jerseys, trimmed in gray. Officials tonight, Matt Copsey, calling it the way I like. We have Brad Klaus, Carter Ford, and Kevin Smith. And you really believe that. I got some ownership from property to sell you. Pat Eddington jumping up here. And the opening tip against Scott Count. And we're ready to get underway. Bethel to move from uh, left to right, respectively. Cougars from right to left. Cougars. Here's Hogan's with a basketball. Josh Hogan over the timeline now in between the rings. As Bethel settles in a little man-to-man -man defense. Over here on the far side now. On the near wing is Bloom. Comes back out to Count at the left elbow. Swings that on the right side now to Josh Hogan. Back here at the time. Nearly stolen by Matt Schaus. Here's a drive to inside the lane, shot on the way, good that time by Kevin Bloom. And the former East Noble standout gives the Cougars an early 2 to nothing lead. From left to right, Matt Schaus hedges off a screen at the top of the ring now. Goes now to Jordan Bauman on the far block. Bauman backing in on Sneary. Fadeaway shot, rims no good. A rebound ripped out of there by Cone. From right to left, here come the Cougars into the half-court set. Hogan looking over on the far side now to Ethan Hussey. Hussey goes back out here to the top, now to Cone. Swings the left side, now to Hogan. Hogan off a near side screen. Goes back into the corner, now here to Bloom. Bloom over here to Cone. Back out here to the top to Hogan. He loads up the triple off the iron. Oh, good. Rebound comes out here to Ethan Hussey of St. Francis. There's a pass inside to the low post. Here's Cone with a power move inside. Missed it woefully bad. And here come the pilots. Up court quickly. Zach Miller on the far wing. Cross court sitting out of Benner. Benner loads up the three-point bomb. No good. Rebound tipped up that time by Pat Edding. And here come the Cougars from right to left. Here's Bloom over the timeline. Now into the forecourt. Hands it off now to Cone and back to Hogan. And they'll set the offense out here at the top. Here's Hogan angling to the right side on the wing. Guarded by Benner. Swings it left side now over here to Ethan Hussey. The former Goshen standout looking for some help. Goes now to the top. Goes right side now to Maribel. Standout to Hogan. Inside of the low post to Sneary. And he's there for the easy layup. Four to nothing. St. Francis. 18-17 to go. First half. Here's Schaus with the ball. Drives to the left side on the wing. Comes back out now here to... 
to Bannerman. Or Bannerman, excuse me. Swings over here, not up. Here to Benner. He drives down the lane. A shot on the way. No good, but a foul call. I got Blackhawk hockey on my mind already, Matt. That's that one's going to be this uh, Scott Cohen, his first team first. Yeah, after especially that exciting win last night for the Hawks in the shootout. Yeah, but I'm thinking about someone who played 30 years Yeah, Murray Bannerman. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Ryan Paul. Benner's free throw is off to him. No good. And at the 18.04 mark, the Pilots still have yet to dent the score sheet. And the Pilots, once again, struggling in the interior. And here's the second free throw. No good. And the ball goes saved by Bowman. Nope, they're going to say he stepped on the end line. And Ryan Benner with two missed free throws. Yeah, Pilots 0 for 3 from the field, 0 for 2 for the line to start the game. From right to left, here's Hogan over the timeline now here at the top. Goes on the right side wing now to Ethan Hussey. Hussey goes inside to the low post to Cohen. Backing in on Edding. Double team comes up and under. Shot off the iron. No good rebound by Bowerman. Deflected into the hands of Matt Schaus. He finally tracks it down and comes over the timeline now. Schaus on the drive down the right side of the lane. Finds the lane. And he scores! Matt Schaus is on the score sheet. So are the Pilots at the 17-38 mark. 4-2 ball game. Here's Cohen with a spin move. Baseline, nice job by Edding. There's a steal by Matt Schaus. Matt Schaus back the other way, stops. Back out on the far wing, comes back to Zach Miller. Miller on the drive, shovels it inside now here to Ryan Bear. Created the reverse layup for the score. We're tied at 4 4. Here's a steal by the Pilots back the other way. Here's Miller, right side now to Benner. Back here to Bowerman. He powers to the goal and he is fouled. Pilots using their defense to create opportunities on the offensive end. Two quick turnovers there for the Cougars. So Jordan Bowerman will go to the charity stripe. Averaging 14.2 points per game, five and a half assists. 66% from the line. He's averaging an assist and a steal per contest. And we have our first tie of the contest here now since the opening moments. As the free throw is good, and now the Pilots have their first lead of the contest now. And that last foul was whistled on Josh Hogan, his first team second. And it's now a 6-4 ball game. The Pilots are on a 6-0 run here at the 17-08 mark. With a basketball, Hogan on the right side. Goes over here to Hussey, goes inside of the low post out of Cole. Cole just lowers his shoulder. Offensive foul ball. And a pair of Fort Wayne guys battling inside this time. And that's Pat Edding taking the charge. And that's two fouls on Scott Cohn, so he's going to be headed to the bench. And that is a significant dynamic as this game unfolds. Mark that one down, Matt. As Cohn's going to pick up that second foul there. And Matt Schaus will walk it up. Goes on the left side now to Ryan Benner. Benner, wrap around, pass inside to the low post now to Bowerman. He shoots the jump shot from about seven feet in very A home run by the Pilots now, 16.42 to go. Bowerman with four now. Here's Hogan with the basketball on the right wing now. Looking for some help, hedges off a sneery screen. Hogan stops, looks for the reversal, goes now into the right wing now to Hussey. Hussey back out to the top now to Sovine, who had just checked in. Kyle Sovine, a 6'9 freshman who did his prep work at New Haven. Here's a three-point bomb by Bloom, banking it up and in. And now it's an 8-7 to seven ball game. And at the 16-15 mark, the Pilots' lead is down to one. Here is Schaus with a drive inside the lane. Spinner, no good. Pat Enning tips it out here into the corner, and it's tracked down by Sneary. Back the other way, here's Hogan on the drive. Shooting, score, no, it came out. And Ryan Benner is trying to take the charge. Yeah, Benner's going to pick up his first, and that's the team's first. Kevin Bloom, that's his 48 three-point basket of the season back there. Foul. Substitutions, a lot of things coming your way. Media timeout here on Regional Radio Sports Pilots, an 8 to 7 leader at the 1558 mark. We'll be right back after this on Regional Radio Sports. The Showbone Knee Center now focuses knees. We know from experience when therapeutic options are more successful than surgery, and how to minimize recovery time when surgery is necessary. Dr. Showbone, Urge, and Benner lead a lineup of physical therapists and athletic trainers who believe their team approach serves patients best. The Showbone Knee Center, a partner with IU Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Find out more at fixknee.com or by calling 888-FIX-KNEE. The Showbone Knee Center. One focus, proven results. 
One-on-one -on -one attention, world-class treatment, that's what you'll find in Mitros Orthopedics. Dr. Mitros is a respected sports medicine specialist and a leader in hip and knee replacements. Learn more at MitrosOrtho.com. Seth Small is going to check into the ballgame now for the Cougars. Some wholesale substitutions for Bethel. Mike Mislin and Brandon Gerber will check in. That's Ryan Benner to the bench. We're along with Pat Edding. Also, everybody else will remain on the floor. As Sylvine will remain along with Hogan, Bloom, and Sneary. As former Maryville standout Josh Hogan's at the line, a 73% free throw shooter. He eyes, flies, and knocks it down. And once again, we're tied at 8-8. Eight, eight. Our second tie of the ballgame. And now another potential lead change here at the 15-58 mark. As Hogan will take his time, he eyes it, flies it, and twinkles the twine, and the Cougars back in front, 9-8. And our second lead change here in the first five minutes of the half. Here's Zach Miller with a three-point Zach Miller's in the score sheet now at the 15-44. And man, it's been my observation as we have another lead chase. Here's Hogan back the other way. Three-point shot at the top. No good rebound. Matt Schaus. Schaus back the other way. Three on two. Matt with a drive on the right side of the lane. Scores! 14-9. Matt Schaus gives the pilots the four-point lead back at the 15-23 mark. Schaus with four now. I was getting ready to say when Zach Miller makes his first basket of the night, it's usually a pretty good sign for him. Here's Seth Small with the ball. Coming into Hogan into the near corner. Hogan, one-on-one -on -one against Brandon Gerber. Hedges off the screen. Drives inside the lane. Running one-hander. He scores, and he has foul. Nice play by the former Maribel Pirate. Coming down the lane that time. He killed the Pilots the last time out with some three-point bombs. This time he's taking it off the dribble drive. Yeah, and Hogan's got four already. Going to try to make it five. And Paul, as you alluded to, with Zach Miller. He was 0 for 5 from the field the last time these two teams played here. So he's already ahead of the game. So Hogan at the line, and I'll put this in perspective, Hogan averages 10 and a half per ball game, and already with five in the early going, and at the 15.06 mark, he has an opportunity to cut into that Bethel deficit, and he does so. He's been outstanding in the early going. 13-12, favor of the Pilots. Here's Schaus left side now here to Mislin. Now it's a Brandon Gerber foul line extended leg. He dribbles. Looks goes for a ball reversal to Zach Miller. Now to Mislin. Mislin shovels it over to Bowerman and he lost the handle on it. He had a wide open layup look that time. Hogan back to the way for USF. Drives. Kick out here to the corner now here to, to Bloom. Bloom looking for a screen on the far side. Now into the ball game is Spencer Comer, a 6'3 sophomore. He and Hale load up the three-point shot off the iron. No good rebound. Small tacks it down in the far corner for USF. And he comes back out to Bloom at the top. Bloom with the dribble. Drive down the lane, and he scores! Another lead change, 14-13. As USF jumps back in front at the 14-23 mark. Here's Zach Miller with the basketball. Comes over here to Matt Schaus, foul line extended left. Hedges off the street. Matt on the drive, running one hand on rims. No, Gerber with the rebound. Back over here to Miller. Wide open three, Miller, bucket! 16-14, here is Hogan with a basketball here. Out at the top now goes over here to the to the wing. Now to Comer back into the corner to Hogan. Hogan on the step out. Nice shot by Mislin on the step out. The drive. Here's the drive by Hogan. Kick out into the corner. Now Small goes back to the top. Here's a three-point bomb at the top by Bloom. Defensively 17-16 as we seesaw again. Three first play in double figures with 10. With the basketball now here is Matt Schaus at the top of the ring now. Matt on the dribble drive. Comes back out to Jordan Bowerman. Bowerman drives down the right side of the lane. And he lost the handle on it. Bowerman with two turnovers in the first six or seven minutes of the ball game. And he's coming out of the ball game along with Zach Miller and Matt Schaus as Buffalo's making wholesale substitution. A whole line change. Return to the floor now will be Ryan Benner along with Jordan Kuhn, his first opportunity tonight. And also, Pat Edding checks back in. With a basketball small going right side now here to Comer. Comer looking for some help. Hedges off the screen. Drives inside the lane. Looking for some help. Goes back out here to the top. Now to Small. Small on the far wing through the leg dribble. 
looking for some help, drives on the right side line, kick out to the corner, now to Calmer, Calmer drives baseline, cut out, comes back to the right elbow, now to Salvar. That guy here to Hogan, Hogan on the dribble drive, looking for some help, a five on the shot clock. Hogan with a running one hand, rejected that time! It's signed by Michael Mislin and Brandon Gerber. Team up on the block, so with two seconds to go on the shot clock, 12.46 first half game clock, the Cougars to inbound the basketball, underneath their own goal. There's a pass right open here, and here's Sovine losing the handle. No, check, check that. They said, was it? Sovine lost the handle on it inside. Turnover number four for the Cougars. And from left to right, here's Michael Mislin to inbound the basketball. And checking back into the contest will be Ethan Hussey. And back into the ball, and out of the ballgame will be New Haven product Kyle Sovine. Here's Coon with the basketball for Bethel College. Over the timeline now, guarded by Seth Small. Bounce pass here to the right side out of Ryan Benner. Benner looking for a cutter. Looking, looking. Goes back out to the top to Mislin. Cross court sit now here to Kuhn. Kuhn with the drive. Down the lane, a running one-hander and a foul call. Jordan Kuhn's going to earn a pair of free tosses here at the 12-28 mark. And Spencer Comer picks up his first foul in the team's fourth. The key thing in the foul department is the fact that Scott Cohn went to the bench at the 16-59 mark with two infractions. And so Jordan Kuhn to go to the line, playing in his 17th game, a 60% free throw shooter, and he rattles it home. And we are tied again at 17-all. With one more for him at the 12-28 mark. Second free throw good, and we have another lead change, as expected, 18-17. But to move from right to left are the Cougars. Here is bounce pass from Small to Bloom. Bloom right here at the midcourt area. Drives at the free throw line. Running one-hander in the lane. Shot no good. Rebound Michael Mislin for Bethel College. And now over here to Jordan Kuhn. Kuhn puts on the brakes and he traveled with the basketball. Unforced error at the midcourt area. You work so hard in every possession means something and you get a silly turnover if it you know if it's a turnover against a great defensive pressure it, you can live with that but when the when they're unforced turnovers those are just killers here's bloom top of the ring now comes back out here to ethan hussey hussey at the point guarded by coon drives down the right side of the lane running one hander left it short gunner tries to go after the rebound can't get it it went off senior ethan hussey and it'll be off the basketball Pat Edding checks out of the ball game now, and senior Drew Schaus will check in. From left to right, it'll be Jordan Kuhn on the slow walk. Over the timeline now. Now into the forecourt, Mislin's trying to set up a high side screen at the top. Kuhn had it stolen away again. Seth Small, and that's going to be it for Kuhn. He's getting the hook. Hussey comes back out to Small, swings the right side now. Here's a three-point bomb by Bloom. Nothing but the bottom of the net again. 20 to 18 and another lead change. This time at the 11-18 mark. Bloom now with 13 is three for three from three-point range. Bloom now with 50 three-point baskets on the season. Here's Ryan Benner right side now here to Brandon Gerber. Gerber looking for some up, goes down to Mislin. Mislin fakes the shot, comes back out here to, to Coon. Coon looking for some help, trying to dribble through a trap, looking. And... Try to get to the free throw line to Drew Schaus. Back to Mislin. His 14-foot baseline shot is good. 20-20 ball game. And another tie. Here at the 10-46 mark. Here's a drive down the right side of the line. Shot rejected that time by the pilots. As Ethan Hussey missed that opportunity. Here's Kuhn with a drive down the lane. Shot. And an offensive foul call on Kuhn. Jordan's going to pick up his first in the team's third. Matt Schaus, Zach Miller, and Jordan Bauman to come back onto the floor. And it will be USF basketball to move from right to left on your screen. In a tie ball game at 20 all. Here's Seth Small with the basketball on the right wing now. Looking for some help. Hedges off here to the right side now to Kevin Bloom. Bloom, who's been red hot here on the drive down the left side of the lane, and he scores again. 22 20. Boy, has Bloom come to the rescue here? Here is Matt Schaus. 
Coming out here to Benner, back out here to Shouts, top of the circle, now to Miller. Miller looking for some ghosts now to brother Drew. Drew backing in, looks for some help. Goes down here to bottom and back to Drew on a redirect. And then the ball is, it's going to have a foul whistle inside. That's going to go on Ethan Hussey, his first and the team's fifth. Boy, Bloom took a huge spill at the midcourt area. And Drew Shouts will go to the line. Shouse is 6'2", senior from Centerville High School. He was a transfer in for one year from Brevard College. There's a 64% free throw shooter. This free throw gets the pilots within one at 22 to 21 here at the 10-03 mark. And Brad Steer getting ready to check into the ball game now. Boy, if the Cougars can get through the first half with not having to bring in Scott Cohn, Oh my goodness, would this be a huge, huge lift for that ball club. As Drew Schaus' free throw is on the way, good again. We're tied again. 22-22. Five ties. Eight lead changes. Is that what we expected? Absolutely. Here's Bloom on the near wing. Back in the corner now here to Comer. Back out the top now to Hogan. Hogan on the dribble guarded by Drew Schaus. On the drive inside the lane, jump pass out here to Sneary. He traveled, no call, shot no good. Sneary got the rebound, and then had knocked away. And Bloom to inbound the basketball to the left of the lane. For USF, the reset of the shot clock, 9.39 to go, first half. It's a 22-22 ball game. Cougars inbound to the basketball. Here's Hogan out here on the perimeter, here at the midcourt area, now on the near wing. Hogan hedges off a sneery screen, moving all the way. Back over here to Comer. Comer drives, reverse line, rejected that time by Jordan Bowerman. Back into the corner now. Here is Bloom going inside to the low post. Here's a strong power move by Sneary, and he scores inside. Once again, the lack of inside presence by the Bethel defensively is killing him. Here's Zach Miller, 19-foot shot on the way, no good. Rebound wrapped out of there by Ethan Hussey. Hussey with the basketball, right side now to Hogan. Hogan looking for some help. Tries to head off a screen, shot from the perimeter. Good from three-point range, 27-22. And just like that, the Cougars have the biggest lead of the ball game at the 8.57 mark here in the first half. We got some scores to pass along to you in Crossroads League play. Huntington on top of Indiana Wesleyan, 22-16, 9.01 to go in the first. Taylor on top of Spring Arbor, 17 to 16, 751 to go in the first. And Grace on top of Marion, 1916, 720 to go in the first. Our coverage being presented by the Gates Automotive Group. Selection service, best price. Gates must be doing something right. Gates has been doing it in Michiana for over 83 years. Chevys and Toyotas over 300 used and stocked at all times. Honesty is not only the best policy, it's the only policy of Gates since 1928. Glad that you can join us here today on Regional Radio Sports. And for those of you listening online and viewing us online, privileged to be a part of this broadcast here as Crossroads League tournament gets underway. We'll be with you again on Friday for Crossroads League women's basketball. These two same clubs will be meeting in Friday over in Fort Wayne. Jody Martinez and Gary Andrews, respective clubs. Here's Jordan Barman with a fadeaway shot inside at 14. No good. Snurry the rebound. Hogan from right to left over the timeline now. Puts on the brakes. Matt Copsey's asking for a palming violation. It's not happening, Matthew. Here is Bloom at the top of the ring. Looking for some help. Goes in the near side now here to Hogan. Tracks it down on the redirect into the corner. Hogan still on the dribble. Double team. Looking for some help. And he throws it out here to the top now to Hussey. Back over to Bloom. Bloom on the drive. Shot up and in. 29-22. And just moments ago, it was a 22-22 ball game. Miller back out to Bowerman, swings the left side to Schaus. Not a bender in the corner. Ryan on the drive. Fade away, shot inside. Yeah! 29-24. Ryan Benner ends the drought now here at the 7.55 mark. Ball, Benner now with four. Here's Hogan on the right wing now, looking for some help. Hedges off the screen from Sovine. Comes back out here to Hussey. Hussey loads up the three. 
Off the iron, no good. Drew Schaus the rebound. Now to Matt Schaus. Matt over the timeline now. Drives down the lane, spins and scores. Now the 29-26 ball game as Matt Schaus scores at the 7.35 mark. Here's it. Ball on the floor. Drew Schaus hustling after it. Big scrum. Miller comes away with it. Two on one break. Schaus to Miller. Miller with a goal and he scores. Just like that is a 29-28 ball game. Set Miller and the pair of sophomore guards doing the job again. Yeah, now with eight pilots on a 6-0 run. Here's Hogan with the ball. Top of the ring now. Goes to the right side now. Here to Hussey. Hussey on the far wing. Looking for some help. Here's a step out inside now to Sovai. He drives, shoots, and scores. 31-28 our score. As Sovines picks up his first two points of the night. 7 4 to go. That's the media timeout. We'll take one, two. Cougars by three. 31 28. Right here on regional radio sports. Former standout Wes Lated on why he chose to attend Bethel College. The coaches really showed me they were interested in me, but it wasn't a phony type interest. They really wanted me part of the program. More importantly, they wanted me to be a student athlete on the campus and to kind of bring an extra element. And Wes, your thoughts on the staff at Bethel? They were very realistic with me. They did a great job of giving me a clear picture of what I was coming into and what they expected of me. Wes describes the atmosphere that Bethel College sets forth. I think it's just the family aspect of it. You know, I came from a great family and very grateful to have that. And I never thought I could have anything like that. But I was just blown away by how much close-knit family type I was who I had all throughout my four years there. Spirited competition, life-changing connections. Bethel College Athletics, we are the ground for spirited connections. Visit Bethel's athletic recruiting page at BethelCollegePilots.com forward slash recruit me. Back live here to our broadcast location. I'm Paul Condry along with Matt Copsey. Cougars, 31-28 leaders here at the 704 mark. And at the line to try to complete the old-fashioned three-point play opportunity is Kyle Sovine. He's a 40% free throw shooter. He's averages three points and one and a half rebounds and a golden opportunity for him. After the timeout, the softball knocks down the free toss. It's now it's a 32-28. Oh, yeah, once again, every moment of the ball game with the Cougars head don't have to play without Cone. Here is Barmas, 14-foot baseline shot, no good. Instead of taking it to the goal, he hops for the fadeaway 14-footer. Don't get it. Here's Sneary going right side now here to Hogan. Hogan back over here to Hussey on the right wing. Hussey on the dribble, free throw line extended. Comes over here to Hogan on the near wing. Here's Hogan, going right side now to Hussey on the right wing, back here to the left wing now to Hogan. Hogan, still on the dribble, coming through the screen, will load up the triple, shot up the rim, no good, Matt shouts the rebound. Matt pushing the ball up the floor. Goes down here to Zach Miller. Zach on the fake, stops, steps it out, goes down to the right elbow now here to Palmer. Now to Miller in the near corner, inside to Drew Schaus. Drew driving, kicking it out here to brother Matt. Matt looking for some help, comes back to Ryan Benner. Ryan fakes the look inside, now goes inside now to Drew Schaus. Drew to the goal, stops. Fakes, shot on the way, rims, no. Sneary the rebound for USF. Seslaw up to over the timeline now. Puts on the brakes, rooms at right side now here to Hussey. Hussey on the far wing. Looking for some help. They're trying to set up that little man-on-man -man opportunity on the far side, two-man game. Here's Small on the near wing. Edges off the screen, looks to go inside, now comes back to Hogan. Hogan in the left corner now. 14 on the shot clock, comes back out to Sovain right inside to Sneary. Sneary with an easy shot inside for a goal. 34-28. 5.33 to go. Here's Schaus, right side now here to Zach Miller. M Miller goes to cross court now to Ryan Benner. Benner on the high dribble at the 45 foot mark. Now he engages on the far wing. Benner stops at the top of the circle and buries the triple. 34-41, Ryan Benner with a three-point basket for Buffalo College. Benner's got seven now. Here on the near wing, Ethan Hussey. Hussey on the, the dribble on the crossover, comes over to the far side now to Seth Small. Small looks over here to the near side. The Hussey goes inside to the low post now here to Sneary. Sneary powers to the goal, missed the shot, tipped it up and in. Once again, Beckles, very poor, poor interior defense is killing him. 36-31. Sneary now with 8.6 rebounds. With the basketball here, Schaus inside now to bomb, and he turns and shoots the fadeaway jump shot. And are they going to count the basket? 
and they're going to count the basket. That was going to go on Brad Snow. That's going to be his first in the team six. And a gift. Little, little time for little, the Wilds. Little continuation. That was a, a Christmas present in February. As Barman will go to the line with an opportunity here at the 444 mark. 440 mark, excuse me, to make it a two-point ball game. A free throw by the right-hander is good. 36. 34 ball game. Bowman now with seven. From right to left, here is Hogan on the far wing. Hogan here at the top. Now angles to the right wing. Drives, cut off. Backs it out now here to the top now. To Comer, back on the right wing to Hogan. Hogan. And a foul away from the basket called on Michael Mislin, I believe. Yep, Mike's going to pick up his first and the team's fifth. All right, so scoreboard updates courtesy of our friends at Hacienda Mexican Restaurant. Chips, salsa, salsa, chips. Which came first to your table tonight? Well, Huntington off and running against Iowa. 31-16, 4.57 to go the first. We'll get him. There's a pass inside stolen by Bethel. Here's Bowman on the breakout. Driving, stopping, popping, missed the shot willfully. That Bowman kept it alive here to Miller. Zach Miller back out here to the top to Ryan Benner. Benner traveled with a basketball. All right, getting back to those scores. Taylor on top of Spring Arbor today, 28 to 22. Grace on top of Marion, 25 to 23. So the big surprise has to be Huntington on top of Iowa, 31 to 16 in Marion at the Lucky Arena. And into the contest for the first time tonight is Newcastle product is Jordan Hahn. He has the basketball swings at left side now here to Small on the near wing. Small hedges off the screen and an offensive foul called on Spencer Comer. And that's a good call. It's happened 15 times tonight. That's the first time it's been called. Comer's going to be whistled for his second in the team seven. Player control foul will be out of bounds. And Comer comes out of the ball game as, as Sneary checks back in. And Travis Smith, who is one of those newcomers of the year huh? in the Crossroads League. We affectionately call him the pest. Here is Ryan Venner on the far wing, back in out of harm's way, comes over here to, to Travis Smith. Wrap around to the low post, now to Bauman. Bauman spinning inside, comes back to Mislin, Mislin free throw line. Looking, looking. Comes back out to Barman on the right wing. Back to Zach Miller at the top. Now high side pass down to Benner. Goes, turns, shoots. 15 foot shot. No good Brad Steele with the easy rebound. Cougars pushing it up now. Here's Hahn on the near wing putting on the brakes. Hedges off the screen at the left elbow. Comes back here to Seth Small on the near wing. Small goes inside to Steary. He drives. Looks for some help. That is ripped away and a foul call on the double down. They're going to get whistle Ryan Benner, and that's going to be a second in the team six. 3.18 to go first half. Cougars, a 36-34 leader. And Ryan Benner to the bench. And Matt Schaus back in. And once again, the Cougars to inbound the basketball to the left of the lane. Jordan Hahn, the 5'11 freshman, the trigger man. As he holds up a hand. And he's ready to inbound the basketball. Comes over here to the near side now to Hussey. Hussey looking for some off on the handoff near wing now to Han. Han one-on-one -on -one against Matt Schaus. Comes around a screen. Goes right side now to Seth Small. Small looking for some help. Drives inside the lane. Off balance 12 footer. Banks it up and in. 38-34. Cougars by four. Three minutes to go first half. There's Zach Miller at the top of the ring. Looks for some help. Hands it off now to Matt Schaus. Schaus at the free throw line. Goes down to the high post now to, to Mislin. Three-point bomb by New York. Zach Miller likes the lamp. 38-37. He was at one at the 241 mark. Miller's now got 11. Over the timeline now. Here's Jordan Hahn on the far side wing. Looking for some help. Looks for a steely screen. Hahn goes back over here to Hussey at the left elbow. And now inside the steering for the easy layup. 40 to 37 once again. The Pilots just struggling inside defensively. Here's Matt Schaus with a drive down the lane. No good. Tipped up by Barman. His shot on the way. No good, but a foul call. And with 2.15 to go in the first half, Jordan Barman will go to the charity strike. Nathan Hussey picks up his second foul on the team's eighth. 
And Barman at the line. Barman three or three tonight. He's got seven points. Free throw on the way. Good. 40, 38. JB converting here at the 215 mark. Hussey to the bench now and Hogan back in for USF. And one more for Jordan Bauman. Boy, what, the Cougars have done a great job in postseason here. Look, going to a across 11 and 3. Harmon's free throw is good. It's a one point ball game at 40 to 39. 2.11 to go, first half. With the ball on the far side wing now, Hahn. Looking for some help, goes right side now here to Bloom. He loads up the triple, no good rebound, Matt Schaus. Matt pushing it up in the air sideline now in the center of the floor. Looking for some help, goes inside to Bauman. Bauman one-on-one -on -one against Siri, goes to Travis Smith. He drives inside, had a shot back away. The Smith got it back. Goes inside now here to Mizzle. He's powered inside, and the block was made inside. I was screened out of the way, but St. Francis comes away with it. Here's Small going to the right side now to Hogan. Hogan inside. Looking and looking, going inside to Sneary. Sneary with an easy shot. Oh, it was rejected out of nowhere by Mislin. Over to the far side, Zach Miller. Miller fakes the trade, goes inside now to Mislin. Mislin backing in, powers to the goal. Right-handed hook, no good. Rebound, Sneary for USF. And Sneary sucking dirty pond water out there. He is gassed. On the right side now, it's Jordan Hahn at the top of the ring. Goes left side now to Seth Small. Small. Looking for some help and a great and a great timeout by Chad Lacrosse. He knows Brad Sneary is absolutely gassed. This young guy can coach. 110 to go here in the first half. Showing great, great instincts of what's going on in the game. Exactly like the Gates out of Motor Group, home of the 995 oil change at all locations. No gimmicks, no tricks, just honest service. The oil change includes a filter and lubrication with the total service you expect from Gates. No appointment needed. Gates Chevy Road across from the Bethel campus in Mishawaka and Gates Toyota on Island Road in South Bend. One-on-one -on -one attention, world-class treatment, that's what you'll find in Mitros Orthopedics. Dr. Mitros is a respected sports medicine specialist and a leader in hip and knee replacements. Learn more at MitrosOrtho.com. Some more scores to pass along thanks to Tiny County's spectacular work. Huntington on top of Indiana Wesleyan, 43 to 20 at the 140 mark of the first half. Taylor on top of Spring Arbor, 33-30 at the half. And Marion on top of Grace, 31 to 27. Oh my, some exciting scores going on in round one of the Crossroads League 2012-13 tournament. Josh Hogan, top of the circle. Swings the left side now here to Bloom. Lobs it inside now here to Sovine. Back out here to the far wing now to here. They come to Small at the top. Small hits off the screen. Launches the jump shot from 16, no good. Travis Smith the rebound. One point ball game. 40 seconds to go in the half. Here's Smith looking for Sadell. Finds Matt Schaus now to Zach Miller on the far wing. Left corner now. Here's Mislin inside to Bowman. Bowman to the goal. He scores. And he's fouled. And the pilots jump in front now after the timeout. Yeah, it's Seth Spells going to bring up his first foul on team's knife. And Bowman now with a chance for the three point play. And Bowman. And once again, we got another one of those lead changes, and the free throw is good, and Bethel now has a 42 to 40 advantage. Bowman now with 12. So we're gonna play for the final moments of the half here. 42-40, Bethel College. Here's Bloom, top of the circle now to Hahn. St. Francis has gotta be thrilled right now. The fact that Scott Cohn, who picked up his second foul at the 16-59 mark, are only trailing by two. Here's Hogan here on the near side, on the left wing. Looking for some out, edges off a double screen at the top. Hogan loads up the triple and buries the triple. Here's six seconds to go. Here's back in front, 43-42. Here's Smith. Three-point bombing away at the horn off the rim, no good. The Cougars will go to the locker room up at point 43-42. What an exciting first half that we have here from the Gates Gymnasium. Everything you want and then some in Crossroads League Tournament play. Cougars 43, Pilots 42. We'll be back in a couple minutes right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, the Marines. Former Bethel 
Olympic standout and current volleyball and basketball staff member Natalie Young describes her first memories while arriving at her first Lady Pilot Camp at the Bethel College campus. Being from a small farming community, I was just worried that no one would really see me play. My first thing was just to get on campus, so I actually came as a camper when I was um, 16 years old. And then it was just kind of like I wanted Coach to see me play. When you first met Coach Martinez, you seemed to develop an instant rapport with each other. Can you reflect on that, Natalie? We had several conversations. He came to several games my junior year and afterwards. He sat down and kind of gave me the spiel about, you know, Buffalo basketball, what it meant to be a lady pilot, and just laid it all out and asked if I wanted to be part of it. And it wouldn't take me probably more than 10 minutes to be like, let's do it. Spirit and competition, life-changing connections. Bethel College Athletics, we are the ground for spirited connections. Learn more about Bethel's sports camps at BethelCollegePilots.com forward slash camps. He wanted to be known for doing his best. His best man in Major League Baseball's most valuable player. He played in six World Series and was elected to the Hall of Fame. Oh, what an honest man. He was best at stealing holes. But the best quality of Jackie Robinson's life was his character. So here's to you, Mr. Robinson. Thanks for passing it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at Daniels.com. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, wherever the mission takes us, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for our nation, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Back live here on Regional Radio Sports. I'm Paul Condry along with Matt Copsey. An exciting first half we have had here at the Gates Gymnasium. Back and forth affair. Matt, I got us with eight lead changes and five ties. What are they, I mean, you just, you know, we knew going into this that we're, this game was going to go down to the wire. And if I'm St. Francis, you're living large because right now you play 16 is at the 1659 mark of the first half. Your best player and, the, and one of the most dominant players in the league never came back onto the floor, and you got a one-point lead at the break. Exactly. Well, they've gotten great uh, contributions out of Kevin Bloom, 17 points, 11 for Josh Hogan, and Brad Snow with 10 points and 8 rebounds. What more can you say? But those three guys have picked up the pace for them, and they've gotten great defensive play uh, as well, keeping Bethel out, out of the uh, out of the mix on the inside for the most part. The pilots have absolutely no answer once the ball goes into the low post against, I don't know whether they'll care if it's Sneary or, or Cohen, or, or even Sovine had a nice uh, three-point play in there, so Bethel is going to have any opportunity to get back in this thing, and once again, it's a one-point game, but I'm talking about winning the ball game. They've got to be able to stop the ball when it goes into the interior. If they don't do that, uh, they're going to be one and done here in Crossroads League Tournament play. Well, and that's the thing is Bethel also has to establish themselves, as Mike Lightfoot said in the pregame show, on more than one occasion. We need to have a presence on the inside, which means Jordan Byron, Michael Mislin, Brandon Gover, and Patrick Eddy need to pick up the pace on the inside and get to the free throw line. The Pilots are 10 out of 12 from the free throw line in the first half. That's where they're going to win the ball game in the second half. And an interesting note, all home teams in the first round of the Crossroads League Tournament are losing at the intermission. Huntington on top of Ibu, 39 to 25. Taylor on top of Spring Arbor, 33 to 30. Marion on top of Grace, 31 to 27. And right here, 43 42. So just when you think it was safe to go back in the water, Play the music. Here that's come the Sharks. That's right. Especially, let's take a look at some first half statistics. First for St. Francis. Ethan Hussey was all through from the field, did not score. He had two rebounds, one assist. Scott Cohn, as we mentioned, over one from the field, zero points. Went to the foul, went to the bench at the 16.59 mark with two fouls. Picking up the pace, Kevin Bloom, 7 of 9 from the field, including 3 of 4 from 3-point range, 17 points. Josh Hogan, 3 of 7 from the field, 3 of 3 from the free throw line, 11 points. Brad Sneary, 5 of 9 from the field, 10 points, 8 rebounds. Kyle Savine, 1 of 1 from the field, 1 of 1 from the free throw line, 3 points. Seth Small, 1 of 2 from the field, 2 points. Jordan Hahn did not score, as did Spencer Comer. St. Francis, 17 of 34 from the field, 50%, 5 of 11, 36%, 4 out of 6 from the free throw, 4 out of 4 from the free throw, right? 
For the Pirates, Matt Schaus, 3 of 6 from the field, 6 points. He also had 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal. Zach Miller, 4 of 5 from the field for 11 points. Jordan Bondman, 4 of 8 from the field, 6 of 6 from the free throw line, 14 points, 2 rebounds. Ryan Bennett, 2 of 4 from the field for 5 points. Patrick Edding did not score. Jordan Kuhn, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Drew Schaus, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 2 points. Travis Smith did not score. Brandon Gerber did not score. Michael Mizzen, 1 of 3 from the field for 2 points. He also had 3 rebounds, 2 block shots. Pirates, 14 out of 29 from the field, 48%. 4 out of 7 from 3-point range, 57%. 10 out of 12 from the free throw line, 83%. St. Francis won the Battle of the Boards 18 to 15. Six assists for St. Francis, two for Seth Small. Pirates had nine, three for Matt Schaus, two for Zach Miller. Turnover seven for St. Francis, six for the Pirates. One block shot for St. Francis, four for the Pirates. One steal for St. Francis, four for the Pirates. All right, our score here at the break, 43-42. The visitors from Fort Wayne, Indiana, are in front. We're privileged to be joined here at the intermission by the Crossroads League Player of the Year, Laura Johnson from Bethel College. LJ, first of all, what a big win for the, uh, the Lady Pilots uh, in the opener against Grace. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, ready to play. Uh, you know, that was a key win we had to do, and now we're excited to play St. Francis on Friday. We split them in the regular season, so it should be a good matchup for sure. Last year, uh, you were a first-team all-conference performer. This year, the conference player of the year. And a lot of people may not understand your story, but your first year here, you played some junior varsity uh, when you came to Bethel after transferring. And I know you made it a personal mission of yourself to work at your game and get better, both academically but athletically. And you've done a wonderful job. Have you even surprised yourself? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you could put it that way. So I don't know, just crazy to think where I came from and just if you had told me I would be where I was at right now in high school, I never would have believed it. And so, you know, I'm just enjoying it, trying not to take it for granted. Um, and I'm ready to go to nationals and make it, you know, hopefully win more there than we had last year. So it's a senior group of 10 gals, so you guys have been successful. You've had some, you've had some of that taste of success at the, in Sioux City. So give us an idea on what you have to do to make a good and a really deep tournament run. Uh, yeah, I think the fact that we were there last year will help us out a lot, uh, just having the experience. And what's going to get us farther than last year is our defense. Um, that's what we, we, we play good defense, get rebounds, and then that's when, that's when we run and that's when our offense comes. So I think that's going to be our key is just playing the way we can. And, uh, you know, we beat Iowa number one team in the nation, so we can beat anyone when we play the way that we can. So. All right, I'm going to ask them to put you on the spot here. Now, you, you saw this game. Uh, so break this game down from an analytical standpoint. What do the pilots have to do to win? What do the Cougars have to do? I mean, you, you're a cerebral person in regards to thinking about the game of basketball. What do these teams, still we'll start with the visitors, what does St. Francis have to do to win this game, Laura Johnson? Oh, man, that, you are putting me on the spot there. Uh, I don't know, they got shit down our shooters. Zach Miller's shooting real good. Uh, also, just stopping the inside game, Jordan. Jordan's doing a good job right now uh, when they get it down there, so. Yeah, and then our boys in transition are doing a good job, so getting back, I'd say. All right, final question. We'll wrap it up. What do you guys have to do to beat St. Francis on Friday? It's all about the defense. They are offensively very sound. Uh, they got Drake who can take it to the hoop anytime she wants or shoot from the outside. Uh, um, they got a good girl in the middle, too, so that's that's how we beat them in the past and how it was a close game the last time is our defense, and that's what uh, controls our offense. So it's all going to start off on the defense and end. All right, congratulations, Carol. Great Thank to talk you. to you. Thank you. Thanks for taking time to do so. No problem. Warren Johnson, the Crossroads League Player of the Year. And let me tell you, folks, for those of you who are watching online, uh, I tell you what, not only is she a, a great talent on the floor, just a deadly three-point shooter, but one of the nicest human beings you ever want to be around and certainly deserve in, of the accolades that have come her way. Academic All-American, and, you know, that's what you, it's all about. So congratulations to Laura and her team. And uh, both, it's going to be a great matchup between St. Francis and Bethel. And, of course, you can hear that game. You're truly on the call at www.rsn.com. We'll be back with more of college basketball. 43-42 Cougars 
at the break. We'll be back right after this on Regional Radio Sports. Teachers Credit Union introduces the new IU Athletics Checking Account and the exclusive IU Athletics Platinum Debit MasterCard. Show your spirit and open an account today. With this exclusive and free IU Athletics Debit MasterCard that earns a rebate with no fees. For more information on TCU's products and services, visit TCUNet.com or stop by your nearest TCU service center. Teachers Credit Union deposits are federally insured by the NCUA and were equal housing lender. Accounts subject to eligibility terms and conditions. See TCU Debit MasterCard terms and conditions for complete details. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, are the Marines. Here at Applebee's, they have all new entrees that are unbelievably great tasting and under 550 calories each. I believe it when I taste it. No, uh -oh, got a skeptical diner on our hands. Yeah, take a bite of the new Zesty Roma chicken and shrimp. Mmm, zesty, mouth-watering flavor? I believe it! See, I told you, it's delicious and under 550 I calories. I believe it too! Oh, and the lady at the bar tried the roasted garlic solo. Hey, I'm convinced! Me too! Hey, I get it. Great taste under 550 calories is super impressive. But just saying I was right would suffice. You were right. You were right. You were right. You were right. Ooh. Anyway, come try Applebee's Roasted Garlic Sirloin and New Zesty Roller Chicken Shrimp. Starting at just $9.99. Big portions, big flavors, and under 550 calories each. Taste and belief. See you tomorrow. After participating in Applebee's, price and participation can vary. Back live here on Regional Radio Sports, Paul Condry along with Matt Copsey. Glad that you can join us here today at the media timeout. The Pilots had an 8-7 to seven advantage. Media timeout, the Cougars came out of that media timeout with a four-point advantage at 32-28. to 28. And then the Cougars, a one-point advantage in the at the intermission, 43-42. to 42. Biggest lead of the ball game for Bethel, Matt. Biggest lead of the ball game for St. Francis. St. Francis, I tell you what. At one point in time, it looked like they were going to run away and high with a 29-22 advantage. And before Bethel came back and scored on three consecutive baskets to get it in a position back for Bethel. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Bethel biggest lead was a four. Yeah, they were yeah, eight to four and 13 to nine on two different occasions. All right, as we're getting ready to get underway here for the second 20, St. Francis Cougars decked out black shorts, black jerseys. The dark blue numbers trimmed in white. The Bethel College Pilots set out in the white shorts, the white jerseys, the blue numbers trimmed in gray. Bethel written in blue, trimmed in gray on the front. We're glad that you could join us. Don't forget we have a slew of programming coming your way on regional radio sports, as well as some great high school basketball on our affiliated station 95.7 with Fan and Andy. As Matt Copsey, Donnie Smith will have all the action over at McEwen Gymnasium as the Cankered Minutemen will be taking on the Westview Warriors. We also have a ton of college basketball games coming up throughout the Crossroads League for Bethel College. And, of course, Donnie Smith right now up with Holy Cross as they're in action tonight against a pretty good yeah, next team. Yeah, they're taking on number seven, St. Xavier. I had a chance to see him this past Saturday over at the uh, file center, and uh, uh, Doug Karp is one of the best players that I've seen. He's, he's in the running for CCA Player of the Year over there. He put on quite a show as well in that 110-75 victory over the uh, uh, Saints this past Sunday. So uh, Bob Schimmer are trying to hang on one more, at least one more, one more night over there. And Paul, there's a possibility that if the Saints can pull the big upset tonight and IUSB beats Purdue Calumet, you could have IUSB and Holy Cross playing over at the uh, Student Activity Center this coming Friday night for a chance to play in the championship game if, if all the cards fall into place. And, and certainly you can't bet against anything. Who would have ever thought that here we are at halftime as we get ready to start the second 20 that all four visiting teams would have the lead in the, in the Iowa St. in the Iowa game in the Huntington is just, you know, you don't think that that game is going to be a 39-25 affair. All right, we're ready to get back to live play. It'll be Pat Edding, Matt Schaus, along with Ryan Benner, Zach Miller, and Jordan Bowerman. 
for the uh, St. Francis Cougars. They're going to come back with Hussey, Cohn, Bloom, Hogan, and Sneary. Here's Benner with a basketball right elbow pass down here to Bowerman. Back to Benner. Benner on the drive. Back and in on Hussey. Comes back out here to Bowerman on the near wing. Uh, he's on the dribble. Hands it off now here to Matt Schaus. Schaus plays cross court now to Zach Miller. Miller drives. Pull up 14 foot baseline shot. No good. A rebound deflected around. Cone tips it over here to Sneary. And here come the Cougars from left to right. Here's Hogan over the timeline now into the forecourt. Here at the top of the ring now. Swings right side on the wing now here to Ethan Hussey. Goes inside of the low post to Cone. Back over here and the ball goes out of bounds. As Sneary lost the handle on it. And he comes out of that play inside and Chadwick Cross is just livid. Want to know whether there was a, a foul and the official underneath said it was a clean block. That's credit Zach Miller for that play. Getting in there to uh, get a hand on it. Kevin Blue to inbound the basketball. Comes out here on the perimeter now to Hussey. Hussey one-on-one against Matt Schaus. Goes inside now to Sneary. Sneary gives some uh, here's a drive inside and a foul call on Sneary. As Pat Eddy took it away. Sneary's going to pick up his second and the team's first. From right to left. Pat Eddy to inbound the basketball. Goes over here now to Matt Schaus. Schaus will make the high walk over the timeline now. Top of the ring now. Matt dribbles down the left side line. Goes back to Bowerman at the point. Looking for some out hands at the Zach Miller on the far wing. Miller trying to hedge off an of Edding screen. Stops. So fakes the screen and roll. Now it goes to Schaus back to Bowerman at the point. Bowerman back over here to Benner on the near wing. Benner on the drive inside the lane. Shovels it over here. Ball deflected around. It's stolen by it. No, it went off the Cougars out of bounds. They're going to say I went out Cone. And Cone just staring at Hulk with the official saying, I didn't touch the ball. I, and I, I was screaming by six bodies. I couldn't tell you who had it. So Matt Schaus for Bethel to inbound. Looking for some help. Looking, looking. Coming over here to the near side now here to Edding. And Edding on the drive, spins inside the lane, powers to the goal, and scores! And Edding gets up for the lead, now at 44-43, 18.35 to go. Believe me or not, is that Pat Edding's first points of the ballgame? Yes, his first basket of the game, and our ninth lead change. Right here at the top of the ring now. Here is Hussey on the drive on the right side of the lane, jump pass out here to the free throw line. Back to Cone, back to the left side now here to Bloom. His three-point bomb is short. Bowerman tracks down the rebound now here to Matt Schaus. Matt over the timeline now. Stops, pops, three-point bomb is good. 47-43, Buckles matched his biggest lead of the ballgame here at the 18-03 mark. Here is Hogan, right side now here to Hussey. Hussey lobs inside now to Cone. He's double-teamed, triple-teamed. The shot from the right block is good. Unstoppable inside when they get him the ball in the low post. 17.49 to go, two-point lead. There's Edding to the goal, left a short rebound, and a foul called on Pat Edding. I like the fact that Pat went strong to the goal and went right after Cone. Yeah, Pat's going to pick up his first ball and the team's first here in the second half. And for Scott Cone, that was his first basket of the game back there to cut the deficit to two. Cone, a Dwinger product. Of course, Patrick Edding, a Concordia product. And here is a, a foul called on Pat Edding again. This time they're saying that, uh, just a common foul here at the top. So boom to trigger the inbounds just to my advantage point. Back out here to Cone, back out here on the perimeter now to Hogan. Hogan guarded by Benner on the right wing. Looking for some help. Goes left side now here to Kevin Bloom. Back here to Hussey. Hussey looking for the lob. Goes back to Bloom at the top. Back here to Hussey. Hussey on the wraparound of the low post. Goes over here to the far side now to Hogan. Hogan across the lane with a spin. Shot from the left block. Good. And a foul call. We're all tied now at 47 all again. And Zach Miller's going to pick up his first foul or sixth tie of the night. And at the 17-18 mark, an opportunity to complete the old-fashioned three-point play for Hogan. Hogan's got 13, trying to make it 14 and give us our 10th lead change. Free throw on the way, good. 48-47. Here we go. Across the timeline, Matt Schaus goes into the corner of Miller. Miller loads up the triple, off the iron, a good rebound deflected by Bowerman, into the hands of Eddie, not a Miller, and he's fouled on the perimeter that time by Josh Hogan. And Hogan's going to pick up his second and the team's second. So Zach Miller doing a great work moving off the ball that time. 
And Matt Schaus to trigger the inbounds to the left of the lane. Pilots in the box on the inbounds. There's a, a screen, there's a pass inside now to Edding. One-on-one -on -one against Cone. Fakes, comes back out to Benner. Benner loads up the triple and buries the triple. BC by two, 50 to 48. Benner with 10. Hussey with a basketball near wing. Inside now here to Cone. Cone had it knocked away and a foul call, not bad inning. And that's three now on Pat and four on the Pirates. And for Pat, we're talking three fouls in about the last four minutes. Darrell Hopkins comes into the ball game now. Have a chance to spend five fouls trying to guard Cone. I, I don't mind that. I like the pair pilots being aggressive there. Here's Sneary with a shot inside. Darrell Hopkins was there, and he lost the handle on it and stepped on the end line. And it'll be USF basketball to inbound to the left of the lane. And to inbound it, here is... Boom, going to the left corner, now to Cone. Cone comes around on Darrell Hopkins, and he... It's fouled, and throws up a prayer, and he's going to shoot a pair of free throws. And he'll be on the foul that time is Jordan Bowman. And that's Bowman second, and the team's fifth. And, and St. Francis getting ever so close to shooting the free throws the rest of the way with the 16-38 mark. So Cone to go to the line. The big fellow, we can talk about his numbers all night long. His free throw, no good. Number two. And... Defensive rebounds at 7.7. Number three in total rebounds per game in the country at 10.3. 310 rebounds. That's three, third in the country. Number 10 in blocks with 55. Number 11 in scoring with 580. And he misses two key free throws. And here's Bethel with the basketball. Schaus goes left side now here to Ryan Benner. Benner loads up the three-point bomb off the iron. A good rebound is off the Cougars. Oh, and Hogan with a great save as two Cougars collide. Here's Hussey on the far lane, comes back to Hogan, right side now to Bloom. Bloom thinks about the tray, still on the dribble, hedges off a moving screen, Bloom with a drive inside, a shot no good, and the ball comes out. And that's again, once again a moving screen. And Seth Miller's going to get whistled for his second foul in the team six. So Bloom to go to the line, the 6'3 senior, 84%, free throw on the way, no good. St. So Francis has missed their last three free throws after hitting their first five. So Bloom with one more. Looks it over, eyes, flies, knocks it down. One of two on that trip, and now it's a 50 to 49 ball game. Boy, I tell you, Bloom has had a sensational basketball game. Well, he's got 18 points now. Here's Benner with a ball driving on the right side of the lane. Wrap around to D Hop in the low block. Darrell Hopkins back it in. Shot from the right block. In and out, no good, but a foul called on Sneary. Nice job by Darrell Hopkins to make a little shake and bake move on that right block. And Snow's going to pick up his third foul, and that's the team's third. 16 minutes to go in regulation. We got a one-point ball game. Darrell Hopkins at the line. The Michigan City product will go to the, track, to the charity stripe, shooting 69%, averaging three and a half rebounds, and right around 3.8 points per ball game. D Hop's free throw is off the iron, no good. And substitutions for the Cougars. Comer's coming into the ball game now. And Sneary will check out. Sneary's played very strong inside. And he's got a double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds. And Hopkins with another free throw opportunity. He eyes it over, flies it, and knocks it down. So one of two for D Hop. And it's a 51-49 BC lead. With the basketball here is Hogan at the top of the ring now. And a foul away from the basket called on who? They're going to call that one on Jordan Bowerman, I believe. They're going to call it on Darrell Hopkins. It's okay. first and that's seven now, so it's going to be one and one when we come back after the media timeout at 15.53. 15.53 to go. Regulation. Pilots 51. Cougars 49. We'll be back right after this on Regional Radio Sports. Thank you. 
back to live action. We'll get you up to date on some scores. Once again, down at the Lucky Arena, 49 to 30. Huntington with 15.59 to go in regulation. Taylor has improved their advantage to over Spring Arbor to 40 to 36, 13, 17 to go. And Marion has improved their advantage over Grace, 38 to 27 with 11.33 to go. And of course right here, it's 51-49 Bethel at the 15.53 mark. At the line will be Cone. Cone just moments ago missed a pair of free throws. And he's going to try to take care of some business here on one in bonus. Cone, the right-hander, eyeing it over, the spin. Eyes, flies, perfect. 51-50 ball game. Cone with the free throw. He'll have one more. Number 21 looking it over. The dribbles, the spins. Eyes, flies, perfect. We're tied again, Matt Copsey. The tile meter continues to come your way. Yeah, that's it. That's our sixth tie of the night. There's Benner with a baseline shot off the rim, no good. And Cone the rebound. Now to Hogan. Hogan up the right sideline. Puts on the brakes at the right wing. Looking for some help. Comes down to Hussey inside. Now to Cone. Cone. Bounce pass over on the baseline to Comer. Back here to Hussey. Hussey. Wrap around to the low post. Now to Cone. Cone. Running across the line. Blocked away by Darrell Hopkins. Over here now to Benner. Benner. Back over to Schaus. Matt to the goal. And he lays it up and in. And once again. We got a two-point ball game. 15-54 to go. 12-3 change, 11 points now for Matt Schaus. For the basketball, far wing, boom. Top of the circle. We load up the three-point shot. Off the rim, no good. Matt Schaus the rebound. Matt from right to left, pushing the ball up. Stops. Right side now to Zach Miller. Miller hedges off the screen, loads up the three-point bomb, and buries it. 56-51. Zach Miller with the three bomb. Possession break up 51-51 tie and catapult the pilots to the biggest lead of the evening at 56-51 with 14-49 to go in regulation. Gates is expanding to better serve the Michigan area. Coming in April, the new Gates of Granger. Total service and body shop plus for brands plus top 10 models of pre-owned certified cars, pickups, SUVs, and vans. The Gates Automotive Group doing whatever it takes for 83 years. One-on-one -on -one attention, world-class treatment, that's what you'll find in Mitros Orthopedics. Dr. Mitros is a respected sports medicine specialist and a leader in hip and knee replacements. Learn more at MitrosOrtho.com. Matt Copsey, Zach Miller came into the game tonight with 96 three-point baskets on the season. There's a 100 now. With that, I was going to say, he is now at the century mark. Not bad for uh, the youngster from North, I should say, Eastern Indiana. Tell you what, he has done a great job. Tell you what, they can play some moves down at Connersville, Indiana. Make no mistake about it. With the ball on the far wing, here is Bloom. Goes to the left elbow. Got a Hussey back here to Hogan, back to Bloom. Bloom comes back out to Hussey at the top right side. Now here to Hogan. Hogan on the drive inside the lane. 21 hander scores. Nice tough touch that time by Hogan. 56 53 ball game. 4 17 to go. Matt Schaus pull up 19 foot off the front of the iron. No good. And it will be Cougar basketball to move from left to right. Schaus. Just grazed the front of the iron that time and maybe caught more net than he did rim. Here's the ball on the near side now here to Hussey. Hussey right in front of our vantage point goes back to Hogan in between the ring. Hogan directs traffic with the left hand. Now swings it to Bloom on the far wing. Bloom goes now to Hussey in the far corner. Now to Hogan at the top. Back to Bloom on the far wing. Back to Hussey at the point. Swings the right side now here to Hogan. Wrap around to Cone. Cone right baseline. Double team. Backing in on Darrell Hopkins. Had a stripped away that time by Matt. Schaus comes back out here to Hussey. He loads up the triple and buries a three-point bomb. And we're tied again at 56 all. 13-34 to go in regulation. Bauman, fadeaway jump shot. Rams good. 58-56. Bauman over the own that time. 13-24. Five mark. Bauman now at 14. And another lead change. Boy, I tell you what, every time you think you reached the limit. You haven't. 
Hogan at the top of the ring, left side now. Now he'll angle to the right side, goes back to Hussey at the point. Hussey on the crossover, running out there by Matt Schaus. Through the legs, comes right side, now to Hogan. Right corner, now to Bloom, back to Hogan on the right side. Back to Hussey, goes inside of the high post, now here to Cone. Cone drives down the lane, scores the easy layup. We're tied again, 58 all. Here with 12.49 to go. Who's going to flinch first? Cone has six now. Benner at the top of the circle. Hedges off the screen. Still on the dribble. Drives down the lane. Running one. Handle from the left block. Good. Ryan Benner. 60-58 ball game. 12.34 to go. 12 now for Benner. From left to right. Here's Hogan. Goes over here to Hussey on the near wing. Back to Hogan. Josh Hogan. Now will dribble in between the circles. Still on the right hand dribble. Swings the left side now to Kevin Bloom. Bloom looking, comes back to Hogan at the point. Hogan waiting for a cutter. Oh, he drug his pivot foot. Goes inside now here to Cone. Back it in, up and under. Shot of the way, good. 60-60. Keep track of the ties in this. The lead changes, man, I've lost track. Here's Miller, three-point bomb. Off the iron, no good. Hussey the rebound for USF. Over the timeline, far wing now. Hussey swings it to Hogan on the right wing. Hogan crosses over, drives inside line, bounce pass here to Comer. Shereen checked it by Darrell Hopkins. Back to Comer, throws up a prayer and it's answered. 62 to 60, Cougars with the lead back. 11.44 to go, second half. That's our 14th lead change, eight yeah. ties. Zach Miller back out to Bowerman. Bowerman at the 45 foot mark, right side. He'll go to the right side now, right. Elbow now, here's Benner, edging off the screen, goes to Bowerman, loads up the 19 foot on rims, no good, Cone the rebound. St. Francis with the ball and a two point lead, 11.20 to go in regulation. Here's Hogan here on the right wing, looking for some help, goes now to Bloom, inside now to Cone. Cone on Hopkins, had it stripped away, and Benner comes away with the steal. Here's Matt Schaus pushing the ball up. Matt, jump pass here to Bowerman, looking for some help, comes back to Benner. Benner looking for some help. Looking, looking, he'll back it out of harm's way and reset the offense. Swings the left side, not a match. Shaw. Shouts on the crossover. Still on the dribble. Around. Jump pass here to the corner of Miller. Three point bomb. Good. 63 62. Is that foul inside? I know Ethan Hussey's down on the floor. I don't know if they're going to say that it was after the shot. No, I guess not. No, I just say, I just say, I said, I think they just stopped playing because he was down and that the play was over with. So the pilot's back in front, Matt Copsey here at the 63-62 time at the 10:49 mark. And Cone will come out of the ball game and get a ball. Well, that's and Stanley will come back in. That's our 14th lead change. Who's going to have the ball last in this one? That's what it's going to come down to. Cougars Hogan with a basketball here on the right wing, guarded by Zach Miller. Here's Sneary, trying to set a screen, goes over here to Seth Small. Back out to the top, now to Bloom. Bloom looking for some help. Hedges off the screen on the right elbow, back to Bloom. Bloom still on the dribble, looking, comes back to Small. Small, back here to the top of the ring, guarded by Travis Smith. Here's Small, with a dribble to the left elbow, comes back to Bloom at the top. He loads the triple, in and out, no good. That ball is halfway down the cylinder. Buffalo got a monster break there. 10 minutes and 10 seconds to go. Buffalo, a one point lead and the rock. Matt Schaus will walk it up in front of the wide camp. Rock goes in the far sideline. Here's Matt Schaus loading up the three-point bomb. Circles the cylinder. In and out, no good. A rebound in the hands of Kevin Brew, the East Noble product. Puts on the brakes on the far wing. Drives down the lane. Stopped up. And it's stolen by Zach Miller of Bethel. Here's Miller over the timeline. Now to Travis Smith. Smith looking for some help. Goes now to Schaus. Down the lane. Shall reject it. Schaus got the rebound back. And he's fouled. Taking it back inside. And that's going to be four on Brad Sneary, I believe. Yep. And credit Matt Schaus for keeping that alive. He got it rejected the first time he got it back and was able to keep his composure and picks up the fourth foul on Sneary. The 79th meeting all time between these two institutions is an absolute classic. Here's Schaus at the line. He eyes, flies, missed the free throw. He'll have one more. Come into the bench now will be Kevin Bloom and Sneary. Cone back into the contest. Now a huge lineup now with Sovine and Cone in the line. Now also Hahn is on the floor now for U.S. So Matt Schaus will try to give his club a two-point advantage. Free throw is good. 64, 62 Bethel College, one of two. 12 points now for Matt Schaus. 
Here is Hogan over there. Time line now here on the right wing, guarded by Zach Miller. Hogan looking for some help. Backs it out, comes down here to Seth Small. Small lobs it inside now here to come back to Small, back out over the top now to Han. Han will back it out here in between the rings, down to the 45 foot mark. Back out here to Hogan. Hogan's asking for a screen on the left elbow. Locks and loads on the three. Shot no good. Michael Mislin the rebound. Back over here to Matt Schaus. Schaus up the right sideline on the street. Back to Travis Smith on the near wing. Travis backing in. Looking, looking. Pass pass to Mislin. And Mislin! 66 62 pass by Smith. Mislin now with four. Here's Hogan with a basketball. Right wing looking. Comes back out to the top now to Hahn. Hahn back here to Hogan. Hogan looking for some help. Goes inside to the low post. Cross court pass now to Small. His three point shot is off the iron. No good rebound. Who's got it? Hogan comes away with it. Back in over here. Oh, what a play by Pat Edding to get into the passing lane to knock it away. 8.42 to go in regulation. 66 62 Bethel. And that shot comes out of the ball game now and into the contest now. I believe it was Ryan Benner. Yeah, Paul, if you've noticed what they're doing now, they're kind of double it. They're kind of doubling up on Scott Conan. They're kind of leaving small, and the other guy's open from the outside. Boom to inbound the basketball to the right of the lane. Goes down here to the t here to Cone. He's one on one against Pat Eddy. He comes back out here to Small at the free throw line. Wrap around to the low post here to Cone. Cone bounce pass to the corner now to Hogan. Back to Bloom at the top. Bloom hedges off the screen, running one hander, blocked away by the pilots. And Eddie throws it up to Miller. One on one against Small. Miller. And he drives his fingers. And Exclusive and free IU Athletics Data MasterCard that earns a rebate with no fees. For more information on TCU's products and services, visit TCUNet.com or stop by your nearest TCU Service Center. Teachers' credit union deposits are federally insured by the NCUA and are equal housing lender. Accounts to the eligibility terms and conditions. See TCU Data MasterCard's terms and conditions for other details. Back live here to the Gates Gymnasium. What a sensational play from Matt Copsey by Pat Enning just to keep yeah. the ball alive in transitional play. Well, him just to get back on the defensive end and to get the ball over there and just to have the presence of mind to push the ball forward in front of two guys. And what a play by Zach Miller with the behind-the-back play there. Last ball was whistled on Kevin Boehm, and now Zach Miller with a chance for a three-point play to give the Pirates their biggest lead of the night. 8.24 to go in regulation. It's Cone, Bloom, Sylvine, Small, and Hogan on the floor for the Cougars. And I guarantee you there ain't no quit here in this group. It'll be Edding, Mislin, Miller, Benner, and Travis Smith on the floor here. We'll get you a game reset here after the Miller free throw. Free throw by Zach is on the way off the iron. No good, so a golden opportunity there. From left to right, here's Bloom. Over the timeline now, guarded by Miller. Hedges off the screen, head comes over to the right side, now to Small, Small. Far wing now here to Hogan. Hogan sets it off the screen from Cone, goes into Small on the far wing. And the ball back to Cone at the left elbow. Here's Small, free throw line, running one-hander. Kick out here to Hogan. Hogan looking for some help. Still on the drive, jump pass now here to Bloom. Bloom inside now to Cone. Jump shot from 14 rims, no. Rebound deflected, and Bethel comes away with it. Pat Edding. The rebound. And here come the Pilots over the timeline now. Ryan Benner in between the rings. 7.40 to go. Bethel a 68-62 leader. Benner, top of the ring, on the dribble. Goes inside, fakes, goes back to Edding. His 17-foot shot is good! Patrick Edding carries a 17-footer! And the Pilots lead it 70 to 62. Eddie now with four Pilots on a 10 0 run. Here is Bloom. Fade away 14 footer in the lane. No good rebound. Cone back up. Strong to the goal. No good. Tipped up. No. Rebound. Who's got it? Eddie saves it to Miller. And a foul call. What a gutty effort by Concordia product Patrick Edding. Oh, he's got 4.6 rebounds now. And he's been the glue that's kept this team together on the defensive end. 
And Pat's going to come out of the ball game. And Jordan Barman will come in. Oh my, has he played a whale of a ball game. And he gets a pat on the back from the Hall of Fame coach. You don't get very many pats on the back during the uh, game from the Hall of Famer. So Bethel with the basketball and a 70 to 62 lead. Benner, top of the circle. On the dribble to the right wing now. Directing traffic with the right hand. He's on the left hand dribble. Now he goes to the right. Baseline back out to Smith. Into the corner out of Miller. Miller traveled with the basketball. And Benner and Travis Smith, the two teammates, collide right here. And Travis shaking the cobwebs out. On the floor, Mislin, Bowerman, Miller, Benner, and Travis Smith for Buffalo College. Seth Small for St. Francis over the timeline now on the crossover. Dribbles to the left wing. And a foul on the perimeter on Travis Smith. And Travis going to pick up his first, that's a teammate, so Travis Smith going to go to the free throw line, one and one. No, it'll be Seth Small. Seth going Small, to, I'm sorry. Seth Small, an 80% free throw shooter, averaging five points, one rebound, two and a half assists, and one steal, and a key point of the ball game here for USF to knock down some free throws. Small, the diminutive youngster from Hamilton Heights High School's free throw is good on one and bonus. It's now a 70 to 63 ball game. And that stopped the 10-0 Bethel run. Second free throw good again. 70 to 64. Benner with the ball here on the near side wing. Goes around the top of the circle. Looks for some help. Goes to Miller on the right wing. Miller waiting for a cutter to go by. Goes to the bomberman. Back to Miller. Miller on the drive down the lane. And he's knocked to the floor but goes to Mislin. And he scores! 72 to 64 is Mike Mislin. And here's the ball knocked out of bounds by Travis Smith. But USF will retain possession here at the 620 mark. Six points out for Mislin. Pilots getting it done on the inside. So to inbound the basketball, Bloom in front of the Wycamp Camp Wackos. Here's Seth Small with the ball in between the circles, angles on the dribble to the left wing. Edges off the screen, comes right side now here to Hussey. Hussey on the near wing, stops, goes left side now to Bloom. Bloom, ball above his head on the dribble, comes back to Hussey, swings it right side now to Seth Small. Small on the dribble, right baseline, shot rejected that time by, I believe it was Ryan Benner. And Benner from right to left pushing the ball up the floor. Ryan on the right wing goes back to Mislin. Back to Matt Schaus on the near wing. 5.55 to go in regulation. Bethel, a 72-64 leader. Matt Schaus goes right side now to Ryan Benner. Cross court sitting out to Zach Miller on the near wing. Zach on the dribble. Hedges off the screen here. Bows to Bowerman. Bowerman inside. Drive, shoots. Scores! 74-64 Bethel College as Jordan Bowerman gets free. And a timeout on the floor. St. Francis. 5.32. To go in regulation. Bethel has its biggest lead in the ballgame right here, right now, at 74 64. The Joe Sauter Motor Group, Hall River 995 Oil Change at all locations. No gimmicks, no tricks, just honest service. The oil change includes a filter and lubrication with the total service you expect from gates. No appointment needed. Gates should be rolled across from the Bethel Campus in Mishawaka and Gates Toyota on Island Road in South Bend. All right, let's get you a game recap of where we're at here, Mayor Cops. You're right now. 5.32 to go. It's 74-64. We've had a ton of lead changes, a ton of ties. Let's set the stage with a game reset. First okay. of all, from the foul standpoint, the Buffalo Pilots have got eight fouls in the book, so it's one in bonus for the Cougars from here on out. Six fouls for the Cougars. All right, alternating possession arrow is going to favor the guests from Fort Wayne. St. Francis with two timeouts up, Bethel with five. And, of course, lead changes and tie. We've been back and forth yes. in this one. 13 lead changes, nine ties. And Huntington is running away and hiding from Indiana Wesleyan. The score is going to shock you. Huntington, 63. Indiana Wesleyan, 36. The number one seed about to go in flames. Spring Arbor is trailing Taylor 48 to 46 with seven and a half to go. And Marion, a 52-41 leader over Grace. We're not gonna talk about situation. No, no, no the game is over. over. Here is Hogan with a basketball for St. Francis. Top of the ring now. Angles on the dribble to the left side wing. Still on the dribble. Looking for some up, goes left side now to Ethan Hussey. Goes inside to, the ball deflected around and the Pilots come away with the, the steal. 
It'll be Ryan Benner on the slow walk over the timeline here on the near side wing. He's going to dribble here to the top of the ring now. They've got Cone all the way out here on the perimeter guarding him. Wrap around to the low post to Bowerman. He drives to the goal and he is fouled by Hogan. And Josh Hogan's going to pick up his third and the team's seventh for Jordan Bowerman. We're going to run two for two free throws. He's 5 of 5 tonight, 16 points. Our last tie in the ballgame, Matt Copsey, correct me if I'm wrong, was at the 12.34 mark when it was 60-60. Yeah, 60-60, and then St. Francis took a 62-60 lead, and the Pilots proceeded to go on a 10-0 run to take the lead, which they have not relinquished. And Bowerman is able to convert the first free throw here at the 5.04 mark. And number 30 with one more opportunity. Free throw on the way, good again as he got some clean living done there. 76-64. Hogan over the timeline now for USF on the far wing now. These teams have met four times. There's a pass inside and in postseason play. And the Pilots have won. There's a jump shot from the near side by Hussey. No good bomb in the rebound. The Pilots have won three of the four. Ryan Benner now here to match Shouse. Shouse over the timeline now here, right in front of Mike. Broadcast partner, Matt Kopsey. And Matt Shouse with the ball at the top now, looking for some help, goes now to Ryan Benner. Benner on the near wing. 17 on the shot clock. Benner on the drive, running one hand, missed it. Rebound deflected around, and Hussey saves it. He'll go over here to Sneary and back to Hussey. Hussey gonna walk it up at the right sideline now. Guarded by Matt Shouse. Hussey. Looking for an elbow screen here from Cohn. Hussey drives, shoots, banks it up, no good. Rebound tipped up, no good. That time by Sneary. And finally knocked out of bounds off of Bowerman. Boy, Sneary should have been called for an over-the-back play there. And to inbound the basketball to the left of the lane will be Bloom with 4.08 to go in regulation. As the one out of a stack, out of bounds play. Boom, looking, 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 goes inside now here to Hussey, his fadeaway six winner is good. 76-66, Hussey with the jump shot inside the lane, right at the 402 mark. Goshen product now is five. Yeah, a pair of Goshen athletes here playing in the, yeah, here is Matt Schaus with a drive down the left side of the lane, he scores as he made the ball off the ball. 78-66, Matt Schaus with the dribble drive at the 345 mark. And here's a turnover on the Cougars. 13 turnovers now for St. Francis. Six here in the second half. Michael Mislin to inbound the basketball on the far sideline. Goes down to Matt Schaus. Matt on the hard dribble. Will dribble up the right sideline now. Puts on the brakes. Goes down to Mislin at the point. Michael comes back to Matt Schaus. Matt on the dribble. Looking for some help guarded by Hogan. Reverses the dribble to the top now. Matt still on the dribble. Right side now to Zach Miller. Miller back to Benner at the top of the ring now. Ryan Benner looking for some up. Goes to the right elbow now to Bowerman. Jordan Bowerman on the dribble. Stops, looks. Goes left side now to Miller. Miller loads up the triple. Yeah. It's got the ball in the bottom of the net. 81, 66 pilots. 3 to go in the ballgame. Here's Hussey with the ball. Top of the ring. Backs it out. Stops. Drives. Shot knocked around and deflected into the hands of Michael Mislin. Back here to Matt Schaus. Up court quickly now to Bowerman. Touch pass to Miller. Drive shoots. Scores. Back over an 83 66 lead with 2.51 to go in the ballgame. And the ball is knocked off the hands that time of Ryan Benner. And St. Francis needs a timeout. 366 Bethel, 247 to go in regulation. We'll be right back after this brief timeout on Regional Radio Sports. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, Wherever the mission takes us, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for our nation, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Back live here on Regional Radio Sports, Paul Condry, Matt Copsey, Tanya Cutter with all the great scores and details. Huntington on top of Iowa, 64-49, 705 to go in the ballgame. Taylor on top of Spring Harbor, 58-55, 324 to go in that one. 
and Marion on top of Grace with 2.33 to go, 55-43. And right now, the only home team with the lead, they are the Bethel Pilots at 83-66. Game reset, here he is, Matt Coxie. Okay, Pilots with five timeouts left, one for St. Francis, 18 fouls for Bethel, seven for St. Francis. Both of these shouldn't free pass, they all favor St. Francis. With the basketball, Seth Small here on the far wing now. Directing traffic with the right hand. He remains on the left-hand dribble. Goes now to Ethan Hussey. Hussey on the far wing. Looking, looking. Guarded out there by Schaus. Goes here in the right corner. Now to Bloom. He loads up the triple and he buries the three-point bomb. 83 to 69. Has a huge bomb that time by Bloom. He's had a sensational basketball game. Now with 21. That's his fourth three-pointer of the night. Here's Matt Schaus over the timeline now. Hands it off now to Ryan Benner on the near wing. Benner looking for some help. Hedges off the screen at the top. Now goes to Zach Miller on the far wing. Zach Miller looking for self, rubs off a screen at the top. Now goes right side now here to the Benner. Benner drives inside, spins, looks for some help. Reverse layup, and he's fouled inside. Nice play by Ryan Benner. Won the ball at the end. Whistle the foul on St. Francis. I think that's going to be whistled against Cohn. That'll that's, be his third. Yeah, it's going to be his third. Team's eighth, so both teams now, both teams now with 18 fouls. 2.03 to go in the ballgame. Benner at the line. Free throw is good. 84 to 69. 13 points now for Benner. As Benner will shoot the second free throw. Good. It's now an 85 to 69 Bethel lead. And to move from left to right will be... Seth Small over the timeline now. Goes left side. It's not Ethan Hussey. Hussey on the far wing. Looking for some help. Trying to get the ball here to the low post now. Uh, but they'll come on high to Small. Small looking. Still on the wing. Goes inside. Ball knocked away by Ryan Benner. And then the ball's on the floor. And kept alive by Matt Schaus. And then there's a foul call on Steary. And that's going to be five on Steary. And credit Michael Mislin for that play. Getting on the floor to get the ball ahead. And Steary will foul out. He did 10 points and 11 rebounds. He did not score in the second half. He was 0 for 5 from the field. So Ryan Benner doing a little fist pump here at the center court area. Brandon Gerber is going to come into the ball game now. I think he's going to come in for, for Ryan Benner. They don't want him to take any chances of hurting that shoulder. Well, a sensational effort by Ryan Benner, both offensively and defensively. And Taylor Clovis is coming into the ball game. His final moments here. As Matt Schaus is on the, the free throw line. Eyes, flies, knocks it down. 86. 69, Colvis. How about this? Colvis and Hussey on the floor. A pair of ghosts and products playing in the last collegiate game potentially. Here on the Gates Gymnasium floor. Free throw good again for Matt Schaus. 87-69. And here is a foul call on Brandon Gerber. 60 feet away. What was that? What do you stop the clock with 140 to go? 65 feet. That's let, let him come down. So Jordan Hahn, a 72% free throw shooter. Michael Mislin will come out of the ball game now, and Jordan Kuhn will come in. Mike Lightfoot, who's been struggling with a, some ails of his own, with a bone spur in his foot and a pinched nerve in his neck. Been a very painful season for the, for the coach physically. Jordan Hahn was able to knock down that charity toss. 87 to 70. Bethel now. 140 to go. Second free throw good. It's now a 87 to 71 ball game. Jordan Kuhn with the ball. On the dribble. Dribbles over the right. And Kuhn turned it over. That's a little, and immediately Jordan Kuhn gets the quick hook. And that's nine turnovers now for the Pirates. Paul, since it was 62-60, honey, excuse me, St. Francis, the Pirates have run out the 27-9 run to take this 16-point lead. With the ball on the far wing now, it's Hahn. One-on-one -on -one with Travis Smith. Looking for some help. Hahn on the spin. Comes back out here to Comer. Comer, right side now to Bloom. Bloom, through the right dribble, guarded by Drew Schaus. Boss pass to the low post now to Cone. Cone on Colvis. Drive, shoots, missed the, miss the shot. And Brandon Gerber grabs the rebound. And the pilots are feeling the love now. Matt Schaus over the timeline now. Here in the forecourt. Puts on the brakes on the right wing. 
Pass inside to Gerber. Gerber to the goal. Missed the shot. Tipped up. No good. And the ball hits the shot clock. And it'll be USF basketball with 61 ticks of the second half clock remaining. And barring the, the meltdown of the century, the Pilots are going to advance to the semifinals of the Crossroads League Tournament. And if Marion holds on, the Bethel Pilots will have a home game in round two. If Marion wins tonight and they are ahead. That's good stuff. Well, and that would also mean if the Pilots and if the Indiana Wrestling games, the Pilots could host the championship game as well. Here's a jump shot by Hussey. No good rebound. Inside Bloom to Sovine, and he scores the layup. 87-73. 47.5 to go. Colbus to win down the basketball. He threw, nearly threw it away. So it'll, he did throw it away. Turnover. With 46.6 to go, Bloom back out here to, to Hussey. Hussey at the top, drives down the right side of the lane, jump pass out here to Han. Han in between the rings. Han loads up the triple, the southpaw shoots it, can't get it to go. Matt shouts the rebound. Matt, the former quarterback at Centerville High School, pushing the ball off the right side of the floor, goes to Brother Drew. Drew looking for some out, hands it off to, to Brother Matt. And with 24 seconds to go, Matt shouts his foul. And checking into the ball game now for Bethel College will be 6'7 freshman Jared Mott from Lucas, Ohio. So shouts to the charity stripe. And that's 10 team fouls, so it's double bonus, two free throws here. Matt delivers. 88, and it's free Big Max for everybody at McDonald's across the way now because they've reached the 88 point mark. 17 points now for Matt Schaus. 88-73. Schaus with another opportunity. Eyes, flies, converts. 89-73. About the 23.1 to go. Schaus to the bench. Gives a hug to the skipper. Over the timeline now. Jordan Hahn. Hahn on the dribble on the far wing. Still on the dribble, guarded by Drew Schaus. Comes back out to the point now to Hussey. Drives down the right side of the lane. Throws it over here to Gerber, and that's going to do it. The Buffalo College Pilots will hold the ball. Final score from the Gates Gymnasium. Inside the Y Camp Athletic Center on the campus of Buffalo College. The Buffalo Pilots, the number three seed, advance to the semifinals with an 89 to 73 win. Bethel improves to 22 and 9. St. Francis drops to 18 and 13 for head coach Mike Lightfoot. A very, very gratifying victory, number 681 to go with 253 losses for the Pilots. They now improve to 1,122 wins against 571 losses. They won their 182nd game here in the Gates Gymnasium. The 79th meeting all time. The Pilots now lead the series 44 to 35. Buffalo College 89, St. Francis 73. They're on to the semifinals. We'll be back with the happy postgame totals for the homestanding pilots right after this on Regional Radio Sports. With the show going Eastern, our focus is needs. We know from experience with therapeutic options are more successful than surgery, and how to minimize recovery time when surgery is necessary. Dr. Shelby.